welcome to National Car Rentals presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. Boise, Idaho, the locals call it Treasure Valley, the city of trees, a city that has opened its arms to the first ever humanitarian bowl matching Cincinnati against Utah State. The Bearcats make their first bowl appearance in 47 long, drought-stricken years. Quarterback Chad Plummer has run and passed the Bearcats to Boise. Cincinnati is a team with a dangerous return man and the best outside linebacker in Conference USA. For Utah State, John L. Smith has led the Aggies to their second bowl game of the 90s. Matt Salk has a big-time arm, throwing for nearly 3,000 yards. And defensively, no one's bigger than Ben Crossland, the Big West Defensive Player of the Year. Welcome to Boise, Idaho, Cincinnati, and Utah State. They are not household names, but may soon be. Two programs on the rise and meet today in the first ever Humanitarian Bowl. And hi, everybody. I'm Craig Bowler, Jack, along with Mike Golick. Welcome to Boise. Today, it's Conference USA taking on the Big West. And two conferences not very well known. So these two schools not only playing for themselves and their schools, but league-wide recognition. Mike, let's talk about Cincinnati. The Bearcats come in 7-4, and four, and they got to Boise because of a very versatile quarterback, Chad Plummer. This guy is something else, and the Bearcats want the ball in his hand. He's an option quarterback. The team, as a team, they have 22 rushing touchdowns, but he is the catalyst. Either running the ball or in the pocket. If he doesn't find a receiver too quickly, he is going to take off. But, Craig, a little surprise. The second series, Chad Plummer goes to wide receiver, and Deontay Kenner, the true freshman, comes in at quarterback. The coaches love his arm. For Utah State, the best way to describe their offense is explosive, and, Mike, they can hurt you three ways, a quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. Boy, and the Cincinnati Bearcats are hoping this is not their Bermuda Triangle. Quarterback Matt Salk, wide receiver Nakia Jenkins, and running back Demario Brown have put up incre impressive career numbers and the, the most impressive one all probably 450 yards of total offense per game on defense the defensive player of the year in the big west ben cross with 24 career sacks this guy's got great feet great hands next year you will see him play on sundays the big west defensive player of the year utah state is ready to hit the field the big west champions taking on cincinnati in the first ever humanitarian bowl we'll have the kickoff coming up out there if you're gonna take a ride on your bike today then you better think twice what i'm trying to say is you can be just as safe as safe could be with a helmet and reflective for all to see but if you're riding on the wrong side of the road then you might be in the path of a 10 ton load the moral is that this song that i sing the right thing always ride your bike on the right side of the road Dave got to take out the trash today, and Alan mow the lawn, and Laura, well, yeah. and you know, they loved every second. To them, it's a gift. Someday you may be in a position to give such a gift. Talk to your family about it. Organ donation. Life goes on. For a brochure with the facts about organ donation, call Arizona Save a Life or visit our website, and maybe someone like Dave will get the chance to take out the trash another day. Welcome back. Broncos Stadium, home of the Boise State Broncos. And the home colors, if you haven't guessed, blue and orange. Do not adjust your television set. This is blue AstroTurf. And Holly Rowe will join us on the sideline today. And Holly? Thanks, Craig. Utah State has had a bit of a coaching controversy. John L. Smith went to Louisville two days after the Aggies finished their last game. He accepted the job, but he hadn't told his players. They say they had to hear about it on ESPN, and they were very upset. So when he came back, the players said they didn't want him to coach in this bowl game. The president of the university, George Emert, stepped in, and they took a vote. He gave them the option of playing in this game without John L. Smith and the six coaches that he'll take to Louisville or retaining the coaching staff. Well, the players finally voted to retain the coaching staff. So John L. Smith will coach in this game, although he is currently the coach of Louisville. And the players say where they were once rebellious, they've now reunited behind John L. Smith. Craig? All right, thank you, Holly. On the other side of the uh, field today is Rick Minter in his fourth season, has his Bearcats in the first bowl game since way back in 1950, trying to even up his record at the 500 mark, 21, 22, and one. For December 29th, Mike Golick, it could not be better 
in Boise, Idaho. 43 degrees at game time. Humidity, 45%, mostly sunny and calm. No, there will be no precipitation in this football game today. It is a beautiful day, and I was talking to some of the Cincinnati coaches. They know Utah State is a throwing team. They were kind of hoping for a little bit of snow flurry, some wind, something that made it a little more difficult, but they're a little bummed out that Utah State's going to be able to sit in the pocket and throw the ball today. Last bowl appearance for Cincinnati. you got to flip the calendar back to 1950, the Sun Bowl. Utah State under then-head coach Charlie Weatherby, 1993 against in the Las Vegas Bowl. Cincinnati won the toss, chose to defer into the second half. The Aggies take a knee nine yards deep and will start up on offense. We know about Matt Sock and his good arm. Demario Brown, a tremendous runner, has had some injury problems this season, but can break the big one. Wide receivers, it's a great threesome. Nakia Jenkins leads this team with 73 receptions. Up front, Mauricio Jordan and Mark Rommel, two all Big West first-team selections. They will anchor that big front line for the Aggies. So the first play of the Humanitarian Bowl, Sock on play action. Good downfield coverage by the Bearcats. Sock will throw and fire complete down to the 30-yard line. And... Hawkins, the quarterback, number 21, made the tackle. The Cincinnati defense, Derek Ransom. Oh, he's a good one. They call him the Big Cat. 15 career sacks. The linebackers, you won't find two better. Curry, the middle backer. Brad Jackson, the outside linebacker. They've combined for over 300 tackles this season. Tinker Keck, a great free safety, but maybe even a better punt return man. Well, we already have a flag. Late hit, moving the ball up the field already. Not the way Cincinnati wants to start out. But you see Utah State, make no, no question about it, they are going to hit the pocket and throw the football. They line up with three wide receivers. Stevie Smith, the motion man, lines up in the slot. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. And the first look of the day for DeMario Brown picks up a couple to the 49-yard line. Well, Utah State going to try and mix it up a little on the run, set up the pass. John Kabalka, the big defensive tackle. You'll see, you'll hear his name a lot, 275-pound senior. He is the anchor of that defensive line as far as stopping the run. Great season for Matt Sock, nearly 3,000 yards passing. 16 touchdowns, 10 picks to lead the Aggies to a 6-5 and five season and the Big West Conference Championship. Sock in trouble. Brad Jackson, the outside linebacker, all-conference USA first team came in, made the sack, the 26th quarterback sack for the Cincinnati defense. And here's one of the best athletes on the field today and Brad Jackson, the senior outside linebacker. They run a variation of the old Buddy Ryan, Philadelphia Eagle, and Chicago Bear 46 defense. And they're going to use a Brad Jackson as that guy to rush, put pressure on the quarterback, possibly drop off into cover some. They says he's probably one of their best cover men, too. But I, I think I like that guy coming at the quarterback. The Jackson, phenomenal year, averaging over 15 tackles a game. Second down, 11. Call it third down, 11, incomplete. So the Aggies will be forced to punt. Opening drive here in Boise, Idaho. You know, normally on uh, special teams, that's when a lot of people may hit the fridge. You don't want to do that here. Not with both of these punt returners. Tinker Keck coming up for Cincinnati uh, right now. Four touchdowns on punt returns. He ties an NCAA record. Don't be, uh, don't be shocked if they don't kick it to him. And a good punter for Utah State, Jerry Aguayo. 44-yard average, a school record this season. And I think the Aggies do not want Tinker Keck to have a chance to return the football. So Cincinnati will get the first try of the afternoon after the 22-yard punt. The running back, Orlando Smith, will get the start today. He's the bigger of the three backs. He practiced well this week and earned the starting position. The wide receiver, keep your eye on Cornelius Bonner. 
Leads his team in receptions with 27. And it's a big front line for Cincinnati. Jason Fabini, a three-time Conference USA first team. A big front line averages. Mike Golick, 6'5", 306. That's why I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Chad Plummer wants to hand it to the running back. That's Orlando Smith, and he weaves his way past the 40 to the 42-yard line on this blue AstroTurf of Boise State. John Del Cardi made the tackle. Let's set the defense for Utah State, Ben Crossland. We've talked a lot about this young man. He will play at the next level, the Big West Defensive Player of the Year, the middle linebacker, very good, all-conference pick, Tony D'Amato, and the Utah State corners, and free safeties, John Del Cardi. What a season. Over 100 tackles in that backfield. Swarming defense, Utah State, not much. Uh, in fact, uh, a yard loss. Caleb Smith made the tackle back at the 40 yard line. Well, again, you see the option uh, with Chad Plummer. You're going to see that a lot. And as we said at the top, Cincinnati's going to find a way to get the ball in Chad Plummer's hand. The next series, most likely, he'll be out a wide receiver with Deontay Kenner, quarterback, and they'll try and throw him the ball. They said the more touches Chad Plummer gets, the better shot they have at winning this game. Plummer with six passing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns on the season. With the play action, stands up and throws. Complete. Oh, what a catch. Inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. Cardi made the tackle, and that was the tight end, Roderick Moore, only his third reception of the season, and Mike, it goes for 22 yards. I don't know how John Dale Carter missed that one. He had a beautiful break right in front of the ball. What sets it up and why he's open for a while is a great play action. Plummer lays it up there, gives time for Cardi to come on over. You want that ball a little more on a rope to get there. Cardi, plenty of time to come over. Just doesn't make the interception. And the Cincinnati offense does not rely on the passing game much. They're ranked 106th in the nation, averaging only 114 yards a game. They go back to the ground and pick up a good chunk to the 33-yard line. Orlando Smith, the ball carrier. Now, this guy, he, he was the third-string running back of this year. The starter was Daryl Royal. He had 148 carries. Robert Cooper, 137. Two of the four players that carried it over 100 times. But the coaches felt Orlando Smith practiced the best over the last 12 days. He said he's going to get his opportunity. You know, Mike Royal and Cooper combined for over 1,000 yards between the two of them. From the I formation, Cincinnati with their first offensive threat of the day. Good hole off the left side and banging for yardage. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. That was Orlando. I checked that 36. That was Landon Smith, the senior. Check out the whole the big offensive line. We said they averaged 306 pounds. You could drive a whole lot of a whole lot of vehicles through that hole. And, and Landon Smith is 247 pounds. Orlando Smith, 245 pounds. So if my addition is correct, they've got just under 500 yards or 500 pounds of beef in the backfield. Bearcats average over 215 yards a game on the ground. That was an 18-yard pickup. Back to the ground this time, Orlando Smith inside the 10, maybe squeezed down a yard, maybe two to the eight-yard line. Craig Miller, number eight, made the tackle for Utah State. Well, what's happening here is the running backs aren't getting hit until the linebackers and the cornerbacks. And when that happens, when you have big running backs, you know, you're going to get a lot of yards. You see, the, you see the, uh, the size of the line right now, 306 pounds for Cincinnati against 266 pounds. You know, there's no question what the game plan is. It's straight ahead. Clock continues to run, 9.42 and counting, first quarter. Bearcats, first offensive series will be very impressive. Second back through is Orlando Smith to the six-yard line, tackled by Diamato. Diamato's a guy they're going to have to count on, 124 tackles. He led the team in the middle. Cincinnati tried a little trap that time. Diamato came up from behind and used his speed uh, to catch it from behind. But this is a guy that's got to stick his nose up in there. He's six foot, 240 pounds. He's like a little fire plug. And against his big offensive line, he's just got to stick his neck in there and try and take up space and not let those running backs run downhill too quickly. Mike Diamato, a junior college transfer and a Rancho Santiago. He's made the transition to Division I very nicely. Two tight ends set for Cincinnati. They're down and short. Orlando Smith dancing, 
good defense. The blue jerseys, the posse arrived maybe a half a yard led by Tony D'Amato. Well, again, D'Amato is doing it from catching it from behind. He's playing a little bit on the backside. They're running away from him, and he's doing a nice job of coming from behind. That time, good job by the defensive line. We've seen it earlier, kind of getting blown off the ball. There were some big holes. That time, they held it up. The back had nowhere to go. D'Amato able to bring him down from behind. Well, that's a gutty call early here by head coach Rick Minter. Fourth down, call it one, and the Bearcats will go for it. 50% on the year on fourth down. Orlando Smith, he was stopped before he had it. Second effort, tackled at the 10. And Utah State's defense, led by Donald Deco, stops Cincinnati on fourth and one. Well, again, the person who made this play was Tony Diamato. They tried a little trap. They pulled the guard to go around the set. And Diamato just blew it up in the middle. The guard was not able to come around. Diamato made some good penetration. See it coming right up the middle. 66 on the pull. You see 46. Just blow it up in the middle. There's nowhere for Orlando Smith to go. He's got to break it out. And he is not an east-west runner. He needs to go north and south. And Deco came from the backside to wrap up those ankles. And so the Aggies... Dodge some trouble early, 8.05 to play, opening quarter, and we're scoreless in the first ever humanitarian bowl, and the skies have parted. It's a blue sky in Boise, Idaho today. You know, and these are two teams, no common opponents, so coach is really burning the midnight oil, oil trying to prepare for these teams, watching a lot of film, picking out tendencies. So you may see the first few series really trying to feel it out and see if each team can stick with their game plan or if they have to make some adjustments. And Mike Rick Minner told us yesterday that he felt like maybe John L. Smith got a little bit of a head start on him because he's going to be coaching Louisville next year in Conference USA. He's been down there recruiting. He probably grabbed some game film on the way down. Uh, I might have stuck to his hand. I would... <laughs> Second offensive series for the Aggies. A couple of yards up to the 11. Brad Jackson made the tackle on Demario Brown. Their total offense consistency, 96 to 97. Ninth in the NCAA, 449 yards a game they're averaging. And most of that is through the air. It's 280 uh, through the air, a little over 100 on the ground. Not, not a real big running team. They won't do it much unless they see an opening. Four wide receivers set on second down. Let's call it eight for Utah State. Three-step drop. Oh, hello. Hello, Brad Jackson. Absolutely just put the hammer down. Well, normally Cincinnati is a go-after-you-man type of coverage. This time they were in a zone because there were no running backs. They drop off into zone. Brad Jackson sitting off to your right. He's going to come into your screen and lay the wood. <laughs> lay the wood on London McBride. And we saw Jackson earlier get the penetration upfield. They're going to rush him. They're going to keep him back. I mean, this guy will be all over the field. Jackson phenomenal. Mike, when you consider he's been involved in over 22% of all plays on defense. Third down, soft, waits, throws, fires, incomplete, down at the 32-yard line. So for the second time, Utah State will be forced to punt it away. And that, Nakia Jenkins, the intended receiver. And that one was on Matt Salk. He had Jenkins uh, wide open. Right now, I think Utah State is, uh, or Cincinnati is confusing Utah State a little bit. You look at Cincinnati's defense normally, it's attacking man-to-man -man on the outside and put pressure on the quarterback. They're dropping seven guys off the, off the line of scrimmage now and playing a deep zone, and I think that's confusing Matt Salk right now. Arguello back to punt. He's two yards deep in his own end zone. First time he touched the ball, 22 yards, and there's Tinker Keck. He's returned four punts this season for touchdowns, two against Louisville. Off the side of his foot, and they will mark this at the 39-yard line. Cincinnati will come back with fine field position. We're scoreless in Boise, Idaho, the first ever humanitarian bowl. Back after this.
<laughs> hey, who delivered? Actually, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Oh! Where's it from? I believe I said it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Oh! Who'd you say delivered? It's not delivery. Oh! It's DiGiorno. Oh! DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza is the frozen pizza with a crust that bakes up fresh like Pizzeria Pizza. <laughs> Bites of four. Don't make me hurt you. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Your heart's pounding, adrenaline's pumping. They light you up, and you go. We asked some of Hollywood's hottest stuntmen to switch antiperspirants and try degree. What's body heat activate? It probably means when you get warm, that it starts working. As your body heat rises, degree releases extra protection when you need it most. I, I heat it up, and it cooled me down. I was on fire, and I was dry. I don't want my guys to see me sweat. This stuff kept up, even in 40-foot uh, high fireballs. Dry as a baby. Body heat activated degree. Your body heat turns it on. Well, Cincinnati brought the band. Why not? First bowl game in 47 years. I'd bring the whole town. Hey, the coaches said this is the biggest game in Cincinnati's 110-year history. They said they just want, didn't want to let the players know that and get them nervous. Now, this is the second series for Cincinnati. We talked about this early. Deontay Kenner, the freshman quarterback, is in. And Chad Plummer, who started at quarterback, moves to wide receiver. That is an odd occurrence in today's game of football. And this, they're hoping, uh, Cincinnati's hoping that this is Deontay Kenner's coming out party. He's a freshman. They wanted to redshirt, but they had some problems with the holder early in the year. He had to come in and do some holding, and that cost him his redshirt. So they're, they're sorry they didn't get him more in more this year. So they want to see how he does throwing the ball. And Chad Plummer, hey, he's just as dangerous at wideout to throwing the ball. Oh, highly recruited out of high school, lines up in the slot. And during uh, that last series, he put the gloves on. So he's ready to catch the football. They dump it out of the backfield, and it's incomplete on the first throw by Deontay Kenner out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And you mentioned that Rick Mentor told us yesterday, hey, this is going to be a, a tale of a game to see how good he is, how well he handles pressure, and is he the quarterback of the future? If not, we come back. Plummer's only a junior, and we start next year, and we see what happens. And they may even switch him around next year. The difference being, like at Ohio State, where they have two quarterbacks, they did it at Florida a couple of years ago. Here, the other quarterback isn't leaving the field. Chad Plummer's going out to wide receiver, so they're both being utilized. Under seven minutes to play, first quarter. Second down, 15. Kenner missed his man, falls incomplete. And you know that Utah State's going to kind of mix things up up front. They want to throw some blitz packages at this young guy. Well, and right there, you, we saw kind of a fake drop and a late blitz. They got some pressure on him late. He's thrown two passes. They've tried to keep it safe for him. The first was a screen, the second a short one. He's just right now, I think he's a little hyped up. He's put, put a lot, way too much speed on the ball both times. Get these couple of passes out, and hopefully he'll calm down. Third down and 15 from the 44-yard line of Utah State. Good field position for the Bearcats after that punt. Kenner stands and fires the arching pass caught at the 31. Plummer, one quarter back to the other. Deco, the strong safety, made the tackle, but what a combination. We're seeing something special here. Yeah, th this is something brand new, a quarterback rotation where the other one stays in. You see he's got time. They love his arm. He is a pure quarterback. And to see Plummer, as you said, highly recruited as a wide receiver. Here he does a little nice inside move, arm over to the outside. And remember, he's tall. He's six foot three. He can go up after the ball. The Florida State wanted him very bad. They wanted Chad Plummer. And now he goes back and plays quarterback. <laughs> he can run the option. Looking, looking. Now comes back the other way. He's got a blocker at the 30, 25, down to the 22-yard line. Oh, what an arsenal. Tony Diamato, the middle backer for Utah State, chased him down. This has got to be so confusing for the Utah State defense. Who are they going to play? The option quarterback, the passing quarterback. Here you see he's reading it. The Aggies are letting him read it. He decides, uh -uh, nothing happening that way. I'll pick up some blockers going around the other way. And obviously the offensive line knows uh, this guy's going to make things up as he goes along. So he, they get out there and get a nice block. Best, Probably the best athlete offensively on the field today. First, first name that comes to mind is just a Cordell Stewart. Exactly. <laughs> Quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. First down and 10 from the 22, let's call it the 21-yard line of Utah State. Bearcats come right back to the ground game. They've been so successful, and Ben Croslin 
the Big West Defensive Player of the Year in on his first stop of the day, knocking down Cooper. Let's go downstairs in Holly Rowe. Craig, one thing to point out about this switch at quarterback is that it's friendly. Chad Plummer respects Deontay Kenner, and he wants to move over to receiver. He realizes that he's a better pro prospect as a receiver. He only played three years in high school as a receiver and one as a quarterback. So he understands what the future holds for him. He's a tremendous athlete, a champion high jumper, a champion high hurdler, and so he's willing to go over at receiver to help the team win and to help improve his future prospects. Thank you, Holly. Second down, Plummer tucked and runs to the 15 to 14 yard line. And he was tackled by Deco, number 45, the strong safety. Good blocking out front. You, you see again the people making the tackles are the, the cornerbacks and the DBs. You know, the linemen have to start getting involved, the defensive linemen. We've seen uh, Diamato, we've called his number a few times. He needs to make a lot of tackles today. A great matchup to watch today, Craig, is Jason Fabini, uh, the left tackle for Cincinnati. He is another guy who will be maybe a first rounder next year in the NFL on the offensive side against Ben Crossland, the right end, as we talked about the, uh, the Big West the defensive player of the year. It's going to be a great matchup today. Two wide receivers set to the far side. Cincinnati inside the 20 yard line on the season, 81%. It'll play action, misdirection. Plummer throws across the middle. He's got a mad touchdown. the play they let develop in the play act because they've been successful running the ball they run this play action it gives it gives Chad Palmer a little more time uh, with the ball to find his receiver Cornelius Bonner who actually came all the way back across the field you see he fakes a little half throw to the left and Bonner's going to come in from the left of your screen all the way across the field John Dale Carter gets caught turning and running his back's turned he can't get up and make the play Bond with the extra point up and good so the combination of Chad Plummer and Cornelius Bonner puts Cincinnati on top in the Humanitarian Bowl. Bonner with his second touchdown catch of the season. Oh, it's a beauty. We'll be back. In a recent college draft, Horatio Porter, Texas Christian track star, went to an Air Express company. Georgia Tech basketball star Angie O'Farrell signed as an electronics analyst. Charlie Lockwood, lacrosse All-America at Syracuse, joined an investment firm. For most student athletes, going pro means the real world. And that's where Champs Life Skills comes in. Helping athletes build personal skills and a commitment to service. And achieve academic and athletic excellence. Champs Life Skills. Helping prepare student athletes for life. When you're looking for anything from gold bulbs to silver bells, stop in and see the folks in the red vest. They've got plenty of decorating and gift ideas to make your season bright. Holiday season or any season, Ace is the place for the helpful hardware folks. These X-Game athletes and I, we share a special bond. One that allows us to understand each other, even if sometimes we can barely understand ourselves. The Winter X-Games, presented by Nike. What are you guys doing? Hey, you know the only time you guys yell box out is when you're out of donut. You guys remind me of my shoe closet. One penny and a bunch of loaf. Car Rental Bowl Week continues as Wisconsin takes on Georgia in the Outback Bowl. Wisconsin, Georgia, Thursday at 11 on ESPN. Boise, Idaho, the foothills capped with snow, but in the valley, just a beautiful day. And there's the man of the hour so far, Cornelius Bonner, 14-yard touchdown reception from Chad Plummer. Pretty impressive two drives. They didn't come up with anything, Mike, on the first time down the field, but they have marched through Utah State. Yeah, the first drive, nine plays, 57 yards. They did come up empty, but they are holding on to the ball. Bounces out of the end zone on the kick. ESPN continues its bowl week coverage tonight at 8 as WAC champion Colorado State takes it high flying offense into the Holiday Bowl against the surprising Missouri Tigers. Tune in tonight, ESPN, for all the bowl week excitement. Missouri and Colorado State.
here in Boise, Idaho, the Humanitarian Bowl. And Cincinnati has struck first. 14-yard touchdown from Plummer to Bonner. And we're seeing kind of what we talked about opposite. The passing attack of Cincinnati, which really they don't depend much on, and it's Utah State that really hurts you through the air. Now they're going to the ground, and Demario Brown picks up big yards to the 35-yard line. Tinker Keck had to come over from his free safety spot to knock him down. Well, Demario Brown had seven, uh, 971 yards on the year in just eight games. This is a guy that went over 100 yards in six of those eight games, and they keep this offense balanced. It would be a pure passing attack if it wasn't for the running of Demario Brown. They love to give him that ball, kind of set things up. They actually used the pass, though, to set up the running game. A psychology major, so he uh, he's a thinker out there, huh? <laughs> First down from the 36-yard line. Sock fires and throws. That ball may have been tipped. He was looking for Nakia Jenkins. Had him open in the flat, but the ball was batted down. Freddie Smith on the coverage, the corner. And I don't know if Freddie Smith got it or if Brad Jackson got it on the way out there. Brad Jackson, you see right at the bottom of your screen, coming out, takes a quick look back and gets a hand up. I think he does tip it. He gets a piece of it first and knocks it off course for Freddie Smith. So again, Brad Jackson, we've seen him three or four different way, ways already helping his defense. Well, Matt Sock, a 50% completion rate on the season so far, Mike, only one of five in this football game. Demario Brown spinning, breaks a couple of tackles, and after all that, a yard to the 36-yard line. Hassan Champion on the uh, tackle there. And this is a great stat, 17 points all season in just the first quarter. And what you're going to see, uh, the, the running game for Utah State, they like to give the ball deep to Demario Brown. But this defense for Cincinnati, when they see a running set, that, again, that 46 defense, that old Buddy Ryan defense, they want to attack and penetrate, and that's very, very difficult for a deep handoff team to make yardage. Third down and 10. Aggies come out with a three wide receiver set. Sock steps in the pocket, throws the rainbow. Got a man and just overthrows Nakia Jenkins down inside the 30-yard line. Sock has a big-time arm. Boy, he sure does, but this is twice now. Two third-down plays where he's had Nakia Jenkins wide open, and he's missed them. So right now, Sock, who's had just under 3,000 yards passing, 16 touchdowns, needs to settle down a bit. When he gets those open men, he's got to hit them. Tinker Keck is back to receive the punt of Arguello. You know, twice now, Arguello's tried to kick it away from him, and he's had horrible kicks out of bounds. They just need to let him punt the ball straight down the middle of the field. Good snap. Good kick, and how about the hang time? Keck underneath it at the 27. Keck up the middle. Keck at the 40. And Tinker Keck, why he is ranked number three in the country in punt returns, battles to the 44-yard line. 37-yard kick, a 17-yard return. Cincinnati by seven. It's Arizona's biggest party. Tostitos brings you college football's biggest party and Tempe Tostitos Fiesta Bowl block party. One duel ticket gets you both great events. Free game. The nation's largest pregame party starts at noon New Year's Eve day with thousands of spirited fans, food, drink, interactive games, and entertainment. Okay. The Tempe Tostitos Fiesta Bowl block party. Six big stages featuring these national bands. The giant Tostitos chip drops at midnight. Two big events, one duel ticket. Call the Fiesta Bowl ticket office at 350-0911 to take advantage of this special $10 price. Computer programmers and lawyers are just some of the careers visually impaired people are doing. The Employment Services Program at the Foundation for Blind Children is making it possible using technology that allows a computer to talk, enlarge printed material, and display in Braille. We screen, train, and provide employers with qualified employees ready to work. If you're visually impaired or looking to hire, call the Employment Services Program at 602-678-5815. Stewie, you shouldn't have. I didn't get you anything. All right, don't worry about it. How'd you know? I just, come on, put it on, put it on. All right, all right. You knew my size and everything. Hey, it, it looks good. Thank you. It looks feels good. Thanks. Happy holidays. Man. Happy holidays, man. Cool. Bronco Stadium. Boise, Idaho, and it has filled in nicely on this December 29th day. Humanitarian Bowl, Cincinnati, 
making their first bowl appearance since 1950 with a 7-0 lead. And the quarterback situation now has shifted back to Chad Plummer, which would make you think, Mike, that the Bearcats want to run. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Big hole up the middle. Daryl Royal, first down, 11-yard pickup, down to the 44-yard line. Let's go downstairs in Holly Row. Hey, Craig, a member of the Utah State Athletic Department told me this morning that he was worried that Cincinnati was more prepared for this game and taking it a, a little more seriously. During their practices, they've been going three hours hard, like for a regular game. Whereas Utah State's coaches were treating this more as a reward, having their players practice for an hour and a half, doing light walkthroughs, and just having a lot more fun. Right now, you can sense that on the field. Cincinnati's skipping out to the huddle. They're running on and off the field. A lot more energy right now from the Bearcats. Probably a 47-year drought from bowl appearances would probably do that for you. Plummer on the reverse, dances past an Aggie. Maybe to the 43-yard line, D'Amato made the tackle. Mike, what do you think? You have a coaching change. He's going to Louisville. There's been some controversy. Yeah, let's put everything behind us, the Aggies say. But yet, has it been loose, you think? Cincinnati takes this game at a more of a, of a serious attitude? I, I think it's tough as a player, as a Utah State player, to know your coaching staff is leaving. You almost, in a way, feel sold out a bit you know, when you recruited there. And, and I, I know they had a tough time for about a week or so before they straightened things out. So I think it's a little more turmoil on the Utah State side. Double tight set and they go right back to the grounds royal and a swarming aggie defense led again by damato number 46 averaging 11 tackles a game boy and i tell you what we talked about the matchup but jason fabini the left tackle on the right end ben cross and uh, fabini just absolutely destroyed cross and fabini a better run blocker than a pass blocker because his Bearcat offense is a more run-oriented offense, but he absolutely drove Ben Crossland into the ground and then <laughs> pounded on him for good measure. It's third down and four, and Deontay Kenner now at quarterback. Number seven, Plummer, lines up as a wide receiver. Kenner throws the up and out and a first down at the 32-yard line. Livingston made the tackle. Well, I tell you, this will mix you up. I'm just thinking to myself, defensively, you have just to be... Now, Kenner comes out, Plummer goes back in to the quarterback. Well, the one thing that, that can make it a little easier for Utah State is knowing, all right, hey, if Kenner's in there, they're going to throw. We'll get our package in and maybe a nickel package in. When Plummer's in there, a little more up in the air because he's throwing a nice touchdown pass, and we've obviously seen the way he can run the ball. So I think it's a little tougher when Plummer is a quarterback. The lone back, Daryl Royal. Final seconds of the first quarter ticking down. Plummer on the option. Here comes Royal. The big man rumble over an Aggie inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. John Del Cardi hung on there, the free safety number three, to make the tackle. Cardi weighs in. Mike at 187, and Royal tips the scales around 230. That's on a... That's uh, before the meal. Before the little pregame that they had, so we might be pushing 240 now. Big block by the tight end, Roderick Monroe. Uh, he got out there on Jeremy Hunt Loveless and absolutely drove him about 10 yards downfield. We have to talk about Monroe. He's a good story at tight end uh, for Cincinnati, really his first year on the football field since high school. That's amazing. You can come in and play Division I football. Have not played. Has not played since high school. Royal again. Final seconds ticking down. Down the sideline. Bumped out of bounds at the 11-yard line again by John Del Cardi. The free safety had to come up. So that ends the first half, and the first quarter, that is, dominated by the Cincinnati Bearcats. They lead Utah State here, the Humanitarian Bowl, by seven. We'll be back. Boise, a quiet western city. it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. No! Where's it from? I believe I said it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. No! Who'd you say delivered? It's not delivery. No! It's DiGiorno. No! DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza is the frozen pizza with a crust that bakes up fresh like pizzeria pizza. Bites it for it. Don't make me hurt you. 
Fresh baked pizza at home? It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Why did the frog cross the road? He didn't. We've rebuilt one of the greatest video game heroes of all time. And now he's back. Frogger on CD-ROM. The classic arcade game is back and better than ever with more graphics, more worlds, more enemies, more superpowers, and it's more addictive than ever. The hardest part is turning it off. Frogger on CD-ROM for PC and PlayStation game console. Revived, rebuilt, and ready to hop. Hey, buddy. You okay? This simple-looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. It can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body. Because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym for 1997 and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. We start the second quarter in Boise, Idaho. 7-0 Bearcats. Plummer to Bonner, the only scoring so far in this game. And Cincinnati, Mike, on the front porch, knocking on the door. First down, just outside the 10-yard line. Plummer likes to run the option. He has stopped, let go, and then tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And good pursuit, Caleb Smith. Number 52 wouldn't let him go the second time, and they throw him for a loss back at the 17-yard line. Smith finishes up the play, but Tony D'Amato again, the one, the man with the penetration as we look at some uh, first quarter stats, 152 total yards. Look at the time of possession. Well, that's a running team if they're winning normally is going to control that possession. Utah State, 28 yards. Matt Sock, their quarterback, is going to have to start to come to the table a little more for their team. Only one of five in the first quarter of play. Second down from the 14. They change quarterbacks. Deontay Kenner is in. Throws it underneath, and the ball falls incomplete. That stops the clock with 14-17, 14-16 to go in the first half. Caleb Smith read that uh, very well for Utah State. They this is the second time they tried the screen. They're, what they're doing is they're running it too fast. They need to set it up a little more, let the D-line get a little more penetration. Caleb Smith never even got penetration up the field, and Kenner threw the ball almost right into his hands. Third down, Aggies coming with the blitz. Kenner stands up, took a hit, throws, fires, touchdown. Bonner with his second catch of the afternoon, goes for another six, and he reached up, climbed the ladder, and put the flypaper on. Well, this is what they want to see from quarterback Deontay Kenner. They said the difference of him and Chad Plummer, when Plummer's in the pocket and he sees the pressure, he'll take off and run. They said Kenner is a pure quarterback. Even when he played Sandlot football, he wanted to control the, he wanted to control the game, stand in there and throw it. They said he will take a hit. He's not afraid of contact, which means, you know, he doesn't really want to run. They said he's not afraid to take the hit, and he took one to put the ball right on the mark for Cornelius Bonner, his second touchdown of the day. Joe Judge kicked the extra point up and good. 14 nothing. How about the arm? How about the catch? Bearcats by 14. Everyone remembers this college highlight, but I bet you've never seen these. North Carolina quarterback Chris Keldorf counseling teenagers. LSU soccer star Amanda Cook on the Student Athlete Advisory Board. Iowa wrestler Joe Williams exploring options at career day. Most college athletes never go pro. They need a program that builds business skills, a commitment to service, and academic excellence. Champs Life Skills, helping prepare student athletes for life. How do you keep the world's leading companies 100% satisfied? 
Just make them 100% successful. That's how Siebel has become the global leader in information systems for world-class sales, marketing, and customer service organizations. We do whatever it takes to make sure our customers are 100% satisfied, 100% successful. Siebel, the global leader in sales, marketing, and customer service systems. How did you get down here? <laughs> Ma? Did you eat your chunky soup? Yeah, Ma. Chunky beef with country vegetables. With more beef than any other soup. Mmm. Lean beef, potatoes, vegetables. Chunky always hits the spot. Where'd you get that outfit? Can't talk out of go. Just want to make sure you're eating good. That's my mom. Oh, yeah? Which one? Campbell's Chunky Soup. It's loaded with beef. Welcome back, Craig Bowler, Jack, Mike Golick, and Holly Rowe in Boise, Idaho. After this game, just strap on the skis and let's go. Well, this is a great play by Deontay Kenner. He sees Loveless right there on the blitz. He knows it's a blitz. He knows there's room over the top right in here, right where the blitzer came. And that's exactly where Bonner goes. Does a nice inside move on Craig Miller and wide open. A good job by Kenner reading where the blitz came from and knowing where the open part of the field was. Steve Smith at the goal line. At the 20, at the 25, 30, still on his feet. 31-yard return to the, boy, what a, what a run by Stevie Smith. Explosive. You look at the scoring drive, Mike, nine plays, 56 yards, 323 off the clock, and a second touchdown. Plummer to Bonner in the first quarter. Now it's Kenner to Bonner. Well, you know, in three drives, they've had nine plays, seven play, nine play, 25 plays. They're controlling the clock. They're controlling the line of scrimmage, more importantly. Utah State's doing the right thing when Deontay Kenner, the true freshman, and is in a quarterback. They're blitzing him and trying to make him make quick decisions. The only problem for Utah State, Kenner's making the right decisions. Matt Sock under center, one of six on the afternoon for 11 yards. It's early, but he's nearly picked. Oh, Brad Jackson, and he had open, had an open lane to the end zone. Brad Jackson does a nice job of playing underneath. They have a little man deep. Jackson comes back and goes underneath into the flat, and he's looking at the quarterback's eyes all the way. You see him break. Matt Sock never really looking off. He's looking at Nakia Jenkins the whole way. He needs to look off a little more. Maybe Brad Jackson doesn't come out there as quick if he sees Matt Sock looking him off a little bit. Second down, 10. Sock now one of seven on the afternoon. Mike, I was saying it's early, but I would think important series right here for Utah State. Absolutely. 14. They come in with the blitz. Sock out of trouble, throws sideline, and it's out of bounds. Adrian Pearson was in the vicinity, but boy, they brought them all. Rob Lucas led the charge of white jerseys and this is this is what they call a, a BTF in Buddy Ryan old term the old Rex Ryan used to be the defensive coordinator here plays his dad defense it's called blitz the formation they'll see a formation and the middle linebacker Philip Curry will call in this case it was Rob Lucas will call the blitz right as they're at the line this time they brought the linebacker that's the beauty of this defense you have to have smart players you have to have players that'll study film and can make adjustments on the fly 1350 remaining in the half a good look at Matt Sock who has missed his last seven throws three wide receiver set Bearcats bring in pressure and Sock hits the blue turf down to the 22 Derek Ransom oh Ransom came in had six sacks on the regular season let's uh, check in with Holly Rowe hey guys before that last sack Matt Sock had run over to the sideline and was talking to his offensive coordinator, Vitrino. The problem is there is a lot of pressure. He is having to scramble a lot, but he's not making the easy completions. He has had some good looks downfield and not completed them. So while they're trying to get this offense started, he's got to get the easy completions. Check at the 42. Tinker is upended at the Aggie 45-yard line. So once again, Cincinnati will start with fine field position. A tough start for Utah State and their quarterback, Matt Sock. Aggies trail by 14. Sweet dreams. Hello? Hi, honey. Hi, Daddy. What you doing? Oh, just working. Why? 
thank you. I'm at the new double tree. <gasps> Don't forget to bring home the cookies. Front desk, can I get more cookies? Double tree and AT&T, working together to bring you quality time. takes a little longer to pour a beer as good as Sam Adams. <coughs> Sam Adams. A better glass of beer. Who loves Team Cheerios? The Stingrays were stung by him. Down south, the Barracudas are chomping him down. The Sharks are in a frenzy for him. Teams all over gave Team Cheerios a tryout, and they loved it. Because it's three awesome O's teamed up and sweetened up with frosting and brown sugar for an amazing sweet crunch your team will love. Don't forget the mighty sand crabs. Yeah, they dug right in. Team Cheerios, the taste your team will love. National Carmel Bowl Week continues as Clemson battles Auburn in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Clemson-Auburn, Friday at 3 on ESPN. Well, we talked to John L. Smith, the head coach of Utah State yesterday. He's on his way to Louisville. Very emotional time for the head coach and his players. Well, I think we're going to be excited. I think once it's over, it's going to hit everybody. Uh, you know, I think the night before tonight is going to be as tough as uh, there is because we, we get together and we do some things in the evening, some tradition things, and I think that's going to be the saddest part for me. Uh, there's going to be some tears shed, but again, it's, it's life. Uh, we talk about that, uh, and that's what football teaches you. Hey, uh, sometimes there's up, sometimes there's down. Just get up and get going. John L. Smith, as we talked to him yesterday, a long ball thrown by Cincinnati. They wanted to go for another touchdown. It fell incomplete, but it has been a tough, I mean, even tough on the fans. Uh, only sold about 2,000 tickets to the uh, Aggie faithful, and Logan's not that far from Boise, Idaho. No, so no. there's been some, there's been, been some turmoil yeah, in, there, in Logan, Utah. There's been some hard feelings. You know, he's taken six coaches along with him, or six total going. And that, that's tough on the players, thinking you know, these guys recruited me, and now they're kind of they're kind of leaving us out to dry. Plummer, the option, tosses and not much, not much. As Daryl Royal was stuffed by Deco, the strong safety. Good downline pursuit by the guys in blue. Well, these guys in blue, as you said, they need to stop right now. Cincinnati, three drives have gone right down the field. The first one, they didn't score just because they ran out of downs inside the 20. You see hands on hips on Utah State side of the line. These guys got to be tired. They've been out there almost the whole game. They really need to stop for their confidence and for the offense confidence. And the quarterback shift, Deontay Kenner back in. Three wide receivers set on third down. Aggie sending some pressure up the middle. Kenner on the run and throws in the flats incomplete. Utah State's bench wants a flag. Oh, they're going to get it. That was no doubt that was intentional grounding. There was absolutely nobody there. This isn't the pros. In the pros, if you break the pocket and throw the ball past the line of scrimmage, it's not intentional grounding. That, not in college. He broke the pocket. You still have to throw it close to a receiver. His receiver broke deep over the middle. The pressure by Tony D'Amato. Intentional grounding. Five yards. Lost it down. Fourth down. Our referee today is Chuck McFerrin. See, he's going to break the pocket to his right, your left. See, Diamato with the pressure. And his receiver cutting over the middle. And he throws it to the outside again. Can't get away with that in the college. Good call by Utah State's defense, defensive coordinator. You know, the young guy's in. Let's bring it. They, they blitzed him a couple of times. The first time he hit it right, throws a touchdown pass. I still think it's smart to, to get, him, get some pressure on him. Steve Smith at the 18. Oh, look at the burst of speed at the 40. And they say he stepped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Boy, Steve Smith, the Rocket Aggies, will have the football when we come back. They trail the Bearcats of Cincinnati by 14. We'll be back. Do you want to make more money? Of course. 
Tap into the excitement of the Fiesta Bowl at www.fiesta-bowl.com. Get the latest stats on Kansas State and Syracuse. Find out who will be appearing in the sensational Microage Fiesta Bowl Parade. Find out who will be playing, when and where at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Block Party. All this and much, much more at www.fiesta-bowl.com. Coming in January 98, accessarizona.com, the best website serving the Valley of the Sun. For advertising information on Access Arizona or the Fiesta Bowl site, call 995-2711. The right thing. Uh, you better look out. You got to take care. On the street, you could say it's a jungle out there. If you're going to take a ride on your bike today, then you better think twice. What I'm trying to say is you can be just as safe as safe could be. But with a helmet, every vector for all to see. But if you're riding on the wrong side of the road, then you might be in the path of a ten ton load. The moral is up this song that I sing. The right thing. Always ride your bike on the right side of the road. It's cable. It's cable. It's cable, you idiot! Tomorrow, Clemson's dynamic duo of Buckner and McIntyre power an all-out tiger attack against the Hilltoppers. Clemson, Western Kentucky, tomorrow at 5.30, only on ESPN2. Welcome to the Naismith House. Welcome back, Bronco Stadium, the home of Boise State, home of the blue turf. 14 0 <laughs> Cincinnati and the inaugural Humanitarian Bowl. And the pressure now is on the shoulders of Matt Sock. The Aggies trail by two touchdowns. On the reverse, here comes Stevie Smith, full of speed, breaks a tackle, picks up six yards, maybe seven to the 36. Well, ESPN continues its bowl week coverage tomorrow at 8 with the Alamo Bowl, 24th-ranked Oklahoma State, and the double threat quarterback, Tony Lindsay, tackle 16th-ranked Purdue with the Big Ten's best aerial combo, and Billy Dickin and Brian Alford. Bull week, bull mania continues tomorrow on ESPN. You saw that handoff go to Steve Smith, the wide receiver. They'll do that three or four times a game. This guy averages 16 yards every time he touches the ball, whether receiving, running, or punt returns. Touched the ball 92 times during the a regular season. Bearcats showing blitz. Sock throws it up. He's got his man. Oh, big catch. No, picked off by Keck. Tinker Keck at the 40, down to the 50. He's got a lane. Still on his feet. Oh, look at Tinker Keck. 20-yard line kick to the 18. Wow. Like a big punt return for him. <laughs> we'll have to see this again, but Mike, my, my goodness, it looked like Steve Smith had the football. It sure did. Good pressure you're going to see coming up the middle again. They're blitzing. They get the pressure on him. Sock throws it up there. You see Keck, he is, he is the center fielder. He's got to come over and make that play. Just times it perfectly. I thought that was going to be the first big play for the Aggies. And the run back, well, he ran about 100 yards to Again, get back. Here's, here's the blitz and the hit he takes right as he throws the ball. A good hit by Dwayne Gossett, the freshman, who was on the all-freshman team for Conference USA. And there's Keck. That was nothing like the, but, but a big punt return for him. His fourth interception, as you see there, leading the team. All is going right for Cincinnati right now. 59-yard return. Well, the Bearcats, Mike, picked up seven wins on the season when they forced 24 turnovers during that seven-win period. The four losses came, and they only forced six. Plummer is the quarterback. It'll start up in the I formation. Now, there's the seven wins. They forced 24 turnovers during that stretch. During the four losses, only got six TOs. Out of all the stats they used, that's probably one of the truest of wins and losses, the turnover stat. Bearcats chewing up some yards inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Ball carrier Daryl Royal sock on the afternoon, only one of nine, 11 yards and the interception. Well, what they need to do with it for sock is they need to go back to some short passes, quick passes, get his confidence back as we take a look at Tinker Keck with the beautiful interception. He had a couple of uh, nice punt return also today, but Matt Sock got to get back to some short throws, get his confidence back a little bit. He is not used to being one for nine. Double tight end set. Royal in trouble, skips and hops back to the line of scrimmage. 
Good tackle by Utah State. Up front, it's John Lutu. Latu, pardon me, Latu, the all Big West second teamer. And that's what the Aggies have to try to do to stop Cincinnati's running. Even though they're doing pretty well passing, the Bearcats are, but running, they have to get some penetration. Again, that Bearcat offensive line averaging 306 pounds. They're tough to penetrate, but that's the way an Aggie, the smaller defense, that's how you stop the option. Option and the run, get penetration and try and mess it up in the backfield. Kenner, the freshman, is back at quarterback. Wants to hit Plummer on the slant. Oh, Plummer took a shot down inside the 10 to the 6-yard line, courtesy of John Del Carty, along with Deco. Well, let me tell you, Chad Plummer is 6'3", 230 pounds. I guarantee you, McCarty might have felt that hit more than Plummer. He popped up from that no problem at all. Again, this is what they like about Kenner. He just drills it in there. There's three guys in the area, and he finds the seam, and Plummer, at 230 pounds, not afraid to go over the middle of the field. Now, Plummer picks himself up off the carpet, goes back underneath center. On first and goal from the six, and the Bearcats want to pound it in. Daryl Royal, 230 pounds, pushes into the three-yard line. Caleb Smith, number 52, wrapped him up. Well, this Aggie defense has got to come up with something, some kind of a big play, some kind of stop. Here, if they could try and hold Cincinnati to at least a field goal attempt, they can get some kind of satisfaction out of that. Right now, they've, they've been on the field just too long, and when, with the size of Cincinnati, they're just going to wear them down. Second and goal from the eye. They send Bonner in motion. Aggies bend, but they don't break. Cardi, John Dell Cardi, the free safety, made the stop. Cardi averaging uh, 10 tackles a game, all Big West selection. Boy, tough kid, 6'2", 187. But I tell you, when you're free safety, and we've called his name a lot today, when he's the one making the tackles, that means things aren't going too well, especially with a run. Now, if he's making the tackles on, on passes, that's something else. But when he's got to make them on runs, that means the running backs are way into their defensive backfield. Third and goal, Roderick Moore and Ashley Hunt. Double tight set for Cincinnati. Touchdown. And they gave it this time to Landon Smith, the senior fullback, 250-pounder, and went off the left side behind Fabini, Joel Delinsky, Brian Yule, that big front of the Bearcats. Again, the offensive line will be the unsung heroes today. They're the ones, you know, grinding it out for the backs. And when you've got two 245, 250-pound backs, you know, it makes no sense, but you just go ahead and run it straight up the middle. Again, this Aggie defense, they've got to be getting tired. They're going to have to start taking chances. Down 21 to nothing, they've got to start pulling something out of the bag of tricks. John L. Smith, in his final game, huddles up with his team on the sideline. They're down 21 here in the first half, and a lot of time left on the clock. 8.30 here in Boise, Idaho. You know, I really do think there's a lot to the fact that, that he, he and a lot of his coaching staff are leaving, Craig. I, I think that affects the players. Again, we talked about a tough week or so where it took the players to, to kind of trust this coaching staff again. And, you know, we, we talked to uh, the offensive coordinator, Bob Petrino, one of the coaches that's leaving, and he said, you know, there were problems of players maybe letting things go in one ear and out the other, saying, you know, why should I listen to these coaches anymore? They're leaving. They're not going to be here next year. It may be a whole different system. So I really think uh, these coaches leaving has an effect on the players more than more than we may think. Now, Utah State has made a hire. They didn't waste much time. In fact, John L. Smith gave his blessings to Weber State head coach Dave Arcelanian, who is a former college roommate of John L. Smith. So they look for an easy transition, but still, you have to think there is a little hurt that goes a long way. Smith at the four. Smith kicks it outside. This guy has burning speed and is knocked out at the 30-yard line. Chad Plummer, Mike, has been a versatile man. We talked about how versatile he is. We've seen him at quarterback. We've seen him at wide out. And again, he was a, a great wide receiver coming out of high school. You, you can just tell the natural swim move he uses to get over a defensive back. Here on the option, look at this versatility. Uh -uh, I'll go the other way. I know my lineman will come back and block. He runs 
about a 10-yard game, but runs 40 yards for it. And can do it through the air. Has some nice time, puts it on the mark for one of Donner, D Connor's uh, two touchdown passes. 21-0 Cincinnati. Demario Brown has just been shut down so far in this game, spinning a couple of tough three yards to the 33, call it the 34-yard line. Ted Grubb, number 94, made the tackle. There's Plummer's numbers, two of three passing, 36 yards and the one touchdown. Rushing, about five of 15, and he's had a couple three I mean, this is, this is receptions. We're looking at the college version of Slash right now, Cordell Stewart of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, and Chad is smart enough to know he, he didn't start playing uh, – quarterback until senior year in high school he knows if he's going to go to the next level it's probably going to be as a possession tight end if he gains some weight or a wide receiver brown boy second effort close to the first down marker outside the 40 Derek ransom finally brought him down to mario brown was stopped not once not twice about three times and still still able to get close to the first down well you know somebody's got to be a spark for the Aggies right now down 21 to nothing Matt Sock having a, a very very rough game throwing the ball to Mario Brown six rushes for 31 yards so he's averaging five yards a pop so maybe let this guy be your workhorse for a while and then you can set it up with some play action get Sock to throw some of the short passes get his confidence back and hopefully get a big play nearly a thousand yards on the season and only eight games played battle some injuries with the knee and ankle Sock in the pocket, throws deep and incomplete. He has been long on the deep ball so far in this game. Stevie Smith, the intended receiver, number four. And, and I, I, don't, I don't understand at all on, on first and ten why, why you're going deep. He's, he's already shown he's not on the money deep. Uh, he's even missed some, some receivers, Nakia Jenkins, short. You've got to keep it short passes, maybe a hitch pass, a slant pass, a screen pass, something to get his kind. He's just stepping back in the pocket and lofting in the air, not even coming close. One of 10 for 11 yards and the interception. He's missed his last nine attempts in a row. Keep it short. door stuck got a door that sticks don't call a carpenter call a golfer because a golf tee here under the hinge will help a sticking door swing free noisy phone don't call the phone company fix it with a hair dryer presenting the new fix it yourself manual from reader's digest your secret weapon to fixing anything and everything around the house leaky water heater don't call a plumber just shut it off then use pliers here these are the real secrets to fixing things. All made simple with 3,000 step-by-step pictures. Noisy toilet? Fix it yourself using no tools at all. VCR eat your favorite video? Don't call a repairman. Use a screwdriver here to fix a broken tape. Call now for your seven-day free preview of the new Fix-It-Yourself manual. Keep it for four easy payments of $874 each, or return it and owe us nothing. Just call 1-800-665-8989. That's 1-800-665-8989. All over America, people are discovering a package of important free information concerning hearing loss. Call the toll-free number right now, and you'll receive a valuable video and informative booklet that show you how hearing aids may help you hear better. I learned a lot of important things about hearing, including ways to help myself. You know, it's sad going through life not hearing what your family's saying, particularly when you might learn how to help yourself with this free 15-minute video. Call the toll-free number for your free video information kit today. You know all those stories you hear about how good it was how much fun we had and how young we all used to be about how much it all mattered and how much we all cared and how no one has ever done it higher or faster or harder or better all those stories you hear they're all true And we're back in Boise, Idaho. Our apologies for some technical problems. 21-0 our score. Cincinnati leading Utah State. Aggies unable to move the ball. They punt it away. And a big return by Tinker Keck has the Bearcats in fine field position once again, Mike Golick. And now we have to, we have to specify every series when Cincinnati takes the ball. 
just who's the quarterback. Actually, almost every play, sometimes they're switching every other play, and right now it is Chad Plummer, so you would suspect, suspect a little more running, but don't rule out now, because they're running so well, a little play-action pass also. Under the six-minute mark left in the first half, look at the total yards, 173 to 36. Plummer in trouble. Plummer will throw, fire. Now, the last time that happened, the flag was out. They're going to call that one incomplete, and the Aggie bench disagrees. Lindsey Hassel made the pressure, brought the pressure in on Plummer. And Plummer's a guy that can get away from the pressure. You're going to see it come right up the gut again, and he breaks out to his right. Does a nice job getting out again. In college, somebody still has to be around the ball. You can't just throw it away. And I, I don't think there was really anybody no. by the, by the uh, ball. I, I think... Uh, Ten yards? Uh, uh, Looked like at 15. Least, at Looked least like 17. 15. I, I think they should have got a flag there. Ag Aggies don't need anything else going against them. Well, Deontay Kenner now steps in under center. The freshman quarterback. Third down and 10. 5.23 to play in the half. Aggies bring the blitz. Kenner steps and fires. Incomplete. No picked and then dropped in the hands of Bashar Livingston. The cornerback at J.C. Transfer out of Monterey Peninsula had it and dropped it. And Cincinnati did a nice job of picking up the blitz again. Utah State, anytime Kenner is in a passing situation, they're going to blitz. This time they bring him from the outside. They pick it up. As I'll see D'Amato coming up the middle also and from the outside. He had him. Crossing route over the middle just threw it behind him. Doug Johnson will punt. He's had 17 punts downed inside the 20. And it looks like another one at the 11-yard line for Doug Johnson. A timeout with 5-11 to go in the first half here in Boise, Idaho. Cincinnati rolling up by 21. The door is stuck. Got a door that sticks? Don't call a carpenter. Call a golfer. Because a golf tee here, under the hinge, will help a sticking door swing free. Noisy phone? Don't call the phone company. Fix it with a hair dryer. Presenting the new Fix-It-Yourself manual from Reader's Digest. Your secret weapon to fixing anything and everything around the house. Leaky water heater? Don't call a plumber. Just shut it off, then use pliers here. These are the real secrets to fixing things. All made simple with 3,000 step-by-step pictures. Noisy toilet? Fix it yourself using no tools at all. VCR eat your favorite video? Don't call a repairman. Use a screwdriver here to fix a broken tape. Call now for your seven-day free preview of the new Fix-It-Yourself manual. Keep it for four easy payments of $874 each, or return it and owe us nothing. Just call 1-800-665-8989. That's 1-800-665-8989. All over America, people are discovering a package of important free information concerning hearing loss. Call the toll-free number right now, and you'll receive a valuable video and informative booklet that show you how hearing aids may help you hear better. I learned a lot of important things about hearing, including ways to help myself. You know, it's sad going through life not hearing what your family's saying, particularly when you might learn how to help yourself with this free 15-minute video. Call the toll-free number for your free video information kit today. 5-10 remaining in the first half of the first ever Humanitarian Bowl. Cincinnati up 21-0. Utah State, kind of the story of the day, Mike. Field position, not good. They start this drive at the 11-yard line. Salk, the quarterback, that trouble. Swings it out of the backfield to Demario Brown. Spins out of a tackle. And drives for a first down to the 19, the 20-yard line. Kevin Ward coming back from his defensive tackle spot. Number 77, chase down DeMario. Now, ABC New Year's Day Bowl lineup. It's a good one. The Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Florida taking on Penn State without Curtis Enos at 1 o'clock. Rose Bowl follows Michigan and Washington State. Mike Price and his Cougars. And then the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Florida State and Ohio State at 8.30. What a day. ABC New Year's Day Bowl lineup, huh? Sit my bag of chips. Sit right in front of that TV. Big bag. <laughs> big bag. Maybe big some, bag. Maybe some wings. Again, Demario Brown, a couple of yards. A first down for the Aggies up to the 22-yard line. Champion made the tackle. Holly Rove, let's go downstairs. 
I'm standing by with Dave Arslanian, the new head coach at Utah State. And Dave, this is a little bit of an unusual situation. You've been on the job for about a month, but just observing and recruiting, huh? Well, I'm the backup head coach right now. The, <laughs> the starting head coach is running this game. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of recruiting. I've had an opportunity to attend practices and observe the players. And uh, right now, we just need to get some things going on the field. How much of an emotional toll has this whole situation taken on the players? It seems like they're a little flat right now on the field. Well, I think the biggest thing right now is we need to adjust to being outdoors again. We've had two practices outdoors. There's a good play right there. We've had two, two practices outdoors in, in, uh, in a month now. And our offense, the schemes we run on offense, I'm talking like I'm part of it right now, uh, are, uh, are really geared for... Uh, for a wide open field and it'll take a little bit to adjust i think we'll adjust and get going all right well adjustments all around craig back up to you all right thanks holly and thanks to dave arcelanian who will take over for that man as soon as this game ends this afternoon john l smith heading off to louisville of conference usa that was a 23 yard pass play the largest gainer of the day and saw hooks up with nakia jenkins a big one-two threat, and that should open up the ground game. Demario Brown to the 50, down to the 46-yard line, shy of the first down. But all of a sudden, Mike Golick, you see a spark. Well, you do, and you saw the short pass to Jenkins. You let him get the rest of the yards. Demario Brown, he hasn't been, he hasn't been tackled by the first guy that's hit him yet. You see the draw play. How many guys he go through? One, two. He just driving his feet. He gets another five, six yards just by keeping his legs going. You always see those legs turning. Right now, Demario Brown, the spark for this offense. And again, keep the passes short. Let the receivers make the extra yards. And the word on Demario Brown, great hips. <laughs> he has a set today. <laughs> he is dancing through. And he pulls a couple of uh, Bearcats for a first down inside the 45 to the 44. Philip Curry, the backer, made the tackle. Well, Utah State, again, averaged just a, a shade under 450 yards a game today. You see 81 yards. Give a lot of credit to the Cincinnati defense. Again, that 46 old Buddy Ryan style of defense. And that's been a difference, too, here, Craig. Rex Ryan was a defensive coordinator here for Cincinnati. He went to Oklahoma. He's gone. He didn't coach in this bowl game. Kim Dameron has taken over as defensive coordinator. Salk. Steps and fires, swings it out of the flats. Brown wide open, makes a nice cut inside the 30 to the 29-yard line, and the Aggies have found life. A first down, Brad Jackson, the outside linebacker, came up to make the stop, but hey, you, you get a touchdown here before half, changes tempo. Absolutely, and Brad Jackson got hung up with the wide receivers, and he went way too far downfield to see him come into the field, uh, play and make the play, but he's supposed to be out in the flats taking any underneath routes away. He just turned and ran, and this is what the Aggies needed. Now they're mixing up the pass and the run very well now. Well, John L. Smith knows Demario Brown is a fine runner, but he likes him better, Mike, after the reception. Salk in trouble, sidesteps it. Look at that stiff arm. Salk still alive, <laughs> looking for help, slings it down, and it's picked off. Brad Jackson, the outside linebacker. Salk trying to make something happen, and he throws the interception. Wow, he did a great job just to get where he did. I really can't blame him for trying to throw the ball. He would have lost so many yards. Does a nice job here of avoiding the rush by Hassan Champion. Then he does a great stiff arm job there on Dwan, uh, Dwan Gossett. Then he's just trying to get rid of the ball before he gets tagged. And uh, Brad Jackson, you know, we talked about Chad Plummer being the best athlete offensively. Brad Jackson, for both teams, probably defensively the best athlete. Brad Jackson, all-conference USA first team, also plays a little basketball. Yeah, he's traveled a bit, and after the season, he'll uh, he'll join the Cincinnati Bearcat basketball team as a guard. Old fumble, old bounces right back into the arms. <laughs> you think things are going their way today? Orlando Smith lost it. Looked down. What a what a hop. I mean, you would think the football was shaped like a regular ball and just bounced right back to him. This would have been a golden opportunity for the Aggies to get it back. You see Smith rumbling outside. The ball comes free, but look at that, right back up to him. He gets it in stride, and again, there's John Dale Cardi making the tackle. Your free safety making the tackle. That is not good. Clock running. That interception, by the way, stopped the longest Aggie drive of the afternoon. Kenner, the quarterback, the pitch to Plummer. Stops the clock at the 31-yard line. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? 
Guys, you talked about the frequent flyer miles that Brad Jackson has been logging, but you don't know just how many, over 6,000. He joined the basketball team for the Bearcats because of three suspensions. They needed him on defense, but that was before they knew they had a bowl berth. So he has been practicing both sports all week. In fact, he came out here to Boise, practiced, flew out to Cleveland to a game where UC beat UMass in double overtime, and he said he had a good game. He had a couple of uh, rebounds, and he played 14 minutes, but now he's back playing football. He says he loves it. Everybody's dream to play two sports and be a Deion Sanders of sorts. Now, right now, the Dion of sorts is cramping up a little bit. It's 6,000 plus miles to take it out of you. Yeah, I think they're kind of stretching his hamstring out. On the interception, he was trying to keep both feet in, and he, and he kind of jammed either his hamstring or his lower back. As you see him trying to stretch out, he made a great play on the interception, but in his effort to keep his feet in bounds, I think he kind of jammed himself up a little bit. We'll take a quick break, 2.30 to go before halftime. Jackson gets some help on the sideline. We'll be back. We know all those stories you hear about how good it was and how much fun we had and how young we all used to be, about how much it all mattered and how much we all cared and how no one has ever done it higher or faster. stories you hear they're all true Welcome back. First annual humanitarian bowl. Cincinnati leads by 21. Let's check the studios and Chris Fowler. Chris? Well, it's our mobile studio. We're out here at Pasadena. We'll have halftime. We'll take you down to Miami. We'll talk about the Orange Bowl and Nebraska quarterback Scott Frost. Also a preview of tonight's Holiday Bowl, Oklahoma or Colorado State against Missouri, and also the latest in sports from ESPN News. All right. Thank you, Chris. In the mobile studio. The mobile studio. Yeah, they take that thing all over. The guys are everywhere, they especially are. bowl time. I yep. mean, they're there at all points of the country, giving you the best coverage you can get. Well, that's what you call frequent flyer miles there. Well, you're not kidding. But he upgrades pretty easily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, plenty of upgrades. Kenner is at the quarterback spot. Two minutes to play in the half. Ben Crossland for the Aggies has been, uh, been pretty silent today. He knew he had a tough task with Fabini and also Golinski, the left side of that Cincinnati line. They throw deep downfield. It's Kenner, and he hooks up, I believe, is that Plummer? Yeah, Chad Plummer. <laughs> Donald Deco made the tackle, but how about, that's the second time today that the uh, new kid hooks up with the old guy. You know, the quarterback switching, and uh, it's working. This is amazing. And now, and now Kenner just runs off the field, and Plummer will go back to quarterback. Again, we'll see Plummer uh, at the wide receiver, and he's got must have a special relationship with Kenner because they're in the same meetings all the time at quarterback. He sees it's a great job. His route was over the middle to his left. He saw Kenner in trouble, broke back around, and followed the quarterback. Great, great job of reading the quarterback and the trouble he was in. Nothing fancy. Plummer hands it up. Maybe a yard. Caleb Smith made the stop for Utah State. Now, you mentioned last time out, Utah State defense has been on the field way too much in this first half. And they did have a stop a, a series ago for Cincinnati to punt. They, they need to put a couple of those together. Now, seeing that their offense, the Aggie offense, went down and had a little bit of a drive, should have given the defense a little bit of a boost, but right now, Cincinnati trying to grind it out and run the clock out uh, for the half. Mike is the number one ranked defense in the Big West, but you can get tired in a hurry out here. High formation. A minute to go in the half. Plummer to play fake. Dances and throws and completes. Still on his feet. Flags are down, but the hook up to Jason Collins Baker, number 83. Looks like a hold. And that's going to be the call by Chuck McFerrin, our referee. So bring this one back. Yeah, anytime you see the flag back there and the referee throwing it, it's usually holding, but 
the play itself, when Chad Plummer gets in trouble and starts to scramble, that makes the linebackers come off their coverage because they know Chad Plummer will like to run the ball. And that freed up Jason Collins Baker or Baker right behind him what would have been a great play if not for the hold. But maybe that's why he escaped the pocket because of the hold. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Penalty brings it back to the 30-yard line. Check the hold. We'll see if that's what frees up Chad Plummer. Yeah, that's on number 61, Joel Delinsky, the left guard. And he's holding John Latou. Latou tried to make a move back across, and Delinsky had to grab on for dear life and got caught. You look at Delinsky, 6'2", 300-pounder. He can also switch over and play center if need be. Kenner is the quarterback. Utah State needs to use some of their timeouts here. Robert Cooper, the ball carrier, not much off the right side. Crossland, Ben Crossland, the Big West Defensive Player of the Year, made the tackle. Now, I don't understand this. They're letting the clock run. Not using timeouts. It, it would be third down right now. They could use another timeout, go to fourth and a punt, and you're down 21 and up, and I, I don't understand that at all. Not when you're losing by that much. First half complete of the Humanitarian Bowl. Cincinnati leads by 21. Let's go to Chris Fowler in the mobile studio. Chris. All right, guys, tough for Coach Smith to get that team to come back for him when he's taken off for Louisville along with six assistants, 21-0 Bearcats at the break. Coming up at halftime, Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit will join you. We'll talk about the Washington State defensive line. They faced a big challenge against the Wolverines' big offensive line, but many believe they are ready for it. We're back in Pasadena after this. When one game ends, another begins. And for 95% of student athletes, it's the big one. That's why every student athlete needs a program like Champs Life Skills, a program that helps athletes hone their personal and business skills, develop a commitment to volunteer and service work, and prepare for leadership while pursuing excellence in academics and athletics. Champs Life Skills, preparing student athletes for the big game. You got a 10,000 acre fire and it's freezing right down your throat. So let's go! Just a routine day of training. Not quite that fast. For America's most elite firefighters. Woo! But for their leader. It was a prison break. Take me down. This time, the enemy is not nature. Kill him. How we wrong. Why don't we see if you're still not a fly? Firestorm, rated R. January 9th, only in theaters. Who loves Team Cheerios? The Stingrays were stung by him. Down south, the Barracudas are chomping them down. The Sharks are in a frenzy for them. Teams all over gave Team Cheerios a tryout, and they loved it. Because it's three awesome oats teamed up and sweetened up with frosting and brown sugar for an amazing sweet crunch your team will love. Don't forget the mighty sand crabs. Yeah, they dug right in. Team Cheerios, the taste your team will love. Humanitarian Bowl halftime from Pasadena, nestled down in the Arroyo Seco, the famous Rose Bowl, where Charles Woodson and Michigan will square off against the man who was third in the Heisman voting, Ryan Leaf, and Washington State. The big ball game just three days away. Of course, much of the pregame focus has been on Washington State's prolific offense and the passing game of Ryan Leaf and the Fab Five. But don't forget that Washington State defense. Now, statistically, they can't match up with Michigan's. But remember, they're playing in the Pac-10 Conference and playing a lot of very good offenses. And they do have one advantage going against that Wolverine ground game. The guys up front are very big. This is not your average weight for a college defensive line. Big Gary Holmes, 6'7", 316. The vocal Leon Bender backs it up with 299 pounds of muscle. Dorian Boost, also an NFL prospect at 282. And Shane Doyle, the little guy, at 254, which in a lot of places is a very average-sized defensive lineman. Wazoo defense did go up more than 150 yards rushing in five of their 11 games this season, but their size, their athleticism certainly has captured the attention of Michigan's coaches and also its quarterback. We have, uh, you know, more of a smash mouth idea of football and running the football a lot more, and uh, they they throw a lot more in the Pac-10. And I don't think that their defense has seen uh, the kind of uh, running game that we have. And you know, 
uh, when you can run the football, you know you can always be successful. And so and in this game, uh, that'll be big for us. Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet join me. Brian Greasy's been confident about yep. their ability to run this football all week long. But again, that's not the typical defensive line. The opponents that Michigan played who were in bowl games averaged about 20 pounds less per guy than Wazoo. You know, Washington State's defensive line probably has the biggest challenge of any area in any of the bowl games. The reason is everybody knows that Michigan's going to line up and run right at them. But don't be surprised if Michi Washington State's defensive line, led by Leon Bender, doesn't play a little bit tougher than people expect. The reason is they're better than people know of because nobody's ever heard of them. I mean, who's ever heard of these guys? Leon Bender, 300-pounder, <laughs> right? Well, I, I, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think you're going to see the linebackers be heavily utilized for Washington State to try to stop Michigan. Also look for the safeties coming up to stop this effective running game. For Michigan, if you go back to the beginning of the year, that left side of their offensive line was a major question mark. Both the guard and the tackle hadn't played one game of college football. They have stepped up and grown up in a big, big way for the Wolverines. They are now the strength of the team. Washington State's defense, though, has one simple mission. Get Ryan Leaf back on the field. Because uh, right. Michigan's going to want to keep him off the field. And that time of possession, I think, is going to be important in a game like this. ABC has the ball game, of course, as you know, on New Year's Day. Pete Jackson, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan from just behind us here. That follows the Cop USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Short-handed Penn State against Florida. And in the evening, Florida State and Ohio State in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. The bowl season wraps up, of course, with the Orange Bowl. And all the focus the entire week, and I guess the entire season, has been on Tennessee's quarterback, Peyton Manning. It may be fitting that Nebraska's Scott Frost, in the final game of his career, is once again seen as the other quarterback. Frost disrespected a bit by Big 12 coaches this year, only third team all-conference, despite the fact that he accounted for 24 total touchdowns, ran for 1,000, and threw for 1,000 yards. Corby Jones perhaps a deserving yeah. all-Big 12 quarterback, and, and Michael Bishop a nice player, but Scott yeah, Frost, right. third team in any conference? Well, it, it, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I think the first two that you're looking at there with Bishop and also Corby Jones are a little bit more flamboyant, and if you look at Scott Frost, here's a guy that has really taken advantage of the system at Nebraska. You can look back at all the great Nebraska quarterbacks, and everybody's going to compare Scott Frost, and I think some of the people in Lincoln still haven't warmed up to him, but the man goes out and he wins football games, and I don't care what style of football you play, as as long as you're winning, that's all that matters. And Scott, Ro I like Scott yeah. Frost since the beginning of the year. I like him also. But there's another guy that nobody ever talks about. It's the fullback, <laughs> Joe Makovica. And the reason why I could talk about him is the inside game is the key to Nebraska's running game. Makovica averages over seven yards per carry. The inside, inside, then they come outside, pitch it, and kill you. But Makovica is the key to forcing everybody inside so they can get to the outside and beat you. Nobody talks about him except you. You I always love, love I the love fullback. The guy. <laughs> if the fullback's getting loose, then the big red's going to be in the pink, Lee, just like your <laughs> <Right>. shirt. <laughs> Coming up next, we're back to uh, ESPN News Studio for an update in the world of sports, then back to Pasadena for more at halftime. At the break, it's Cincinnati all over the Aggies. Chad Plummer to Cornelius Bonner, one of three UC touchdowns in the first half. Why is America on America Online? You go to check your email, it's just like opening a present. Easy to use, friendly menus, and we've been working night and day to more than double capacity. It puts the whole internet right at my fingertips. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Another link between vitamins and your health. It seems everybody is talking about the importance of vitamins, and if you take vitamins, I've got great news. Now you can buy your vitamins direct from one of America's leading vitamin manufacturers at incredible savings. Top quality, super low prices, it's all right here in this free catalog from Puritan's Pride. And now is a great time to call for your free catalog. It's the Puritan's Pride two-for-one vitamin sale. Buy one E400 and get one free. Two bottles for just $10.50. And how about this? Buy one bottle of ginseng, get another one free. Both for only $6.25. It's amazing. The two-for-one values are throughout the catalog and include the newest products nutritional science has to offer. Puritan's Pride is so sure you'll be pleased. They offer a full money-back guarantee on every purchase. So call now for your free two-for-one vitamin catalog. Puritan's Pride, the smart way to buy vitamins. Tune into Sports Center for the best sports moments of 97. Which ones deserve a fan's choice SB? Watch Sports Center or log on to ESPN Sports Zone and make your picks for the SBs. From 
the worldwide leader in sports. This is the ESPN News Network. As promised, warmest of welcomes to those of you watching the Humanitarian Bowl on the Deuce. You're now watching the ESPN News Network. I'm Dave Revson, updating you on everything going on in the world of sports today. But first, this very subtle programming reminder, there's more college football action in store tonight on the ESPN family of networks. Mizzou and Colorado State doing battle in the Holiday Bowl on ESPN, a game that promises to provide many offensive fireworks. They will kick it off at 8 Eastern. You should watch. To the NFL, where after his team's third loss of the year to the New England Patriots, Jimmy Johnson promised changes for next season. And Johnson didn't waver from that at today's news conference. He made it clear the problem is not Dan Marino. It's personnel decisions the coaching staff made about the guys who are surrounding the longtime Dolphins QB. Dan Marino's our quarterback. You know, he's not going to be traded. He's not going to be released. You know, how many times do I have to say it? Dan Marino, you know, Dan Marino's one of the better quarterbacks in this league. Uh, and I want Dan Marino back, you know, with the Miami Dolphins. Now, can Dan Marino carry the offense on his shoulders? Maybe there was a day that he could, but I don't think that he can right now. And so it's my responsibility to give Dan Marino help. It's my responsibility to correct the problem areas. And so I don't, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody other than me. I screwed up. This was just the second postseason loss of Johnson's career in nine all-time playoff games. Clearly, the offense does need to be retooled. There are 162 yards of total offense yesterday, an all-time franchise playoff low. If Dennis Rodman would be voted the NBA player most likely to be involved in a major fracas, Derek Coleman would probably be a close second. His worminess has been on his best behavior, though, this year, which left the door wide open for Coleman, and Derek walked right through it last night. Let's Still check out the shoot. highlights. It was the Kings battling the Sixers. Corliss Williamson, Williamson attempts to swat it away from Coleman, Coleman. then check Coleman out the, the spot house. shadow where interesting spot. things always Williamson seem to happen. No We've fish. got controversy. Yes, the play progresses. And Coleman and Williamson uh, going at it. Williamson, Williamson attempting the close line and then everything goes crazy. Larry Brown in there trying to break it up. Players from both teams involved, although no one left the benches. That, of course, would be an automatic suspension. Speaking of suspensions, here they are. Three games, $15,000 fine for Williamson. Coleman suspended two games and fined 10000 in addition. Each fined 1000 for being ejected. If you're watching the Humanitarian Bowl, you're headed back there. 21-0 Cincinnati thanks to two Cornelius Bonner touchdowns. Stay with us on ESPN News. Are you tired of the game yet? You what store searches the world to find the most beautiful gold jewelry? Guarantees you'll get the carrots and quality you've been promised. And has sold enough necklaces and bracelets to make a golden chain around the moon. Twice. What store? You're looking at it. Watch the California Gold Rush on QVC. All new 14 karat gold jewelry. At our best prices of the year. All day Saturday, January 24th. Recognize these names. They're just a few of the many local advertisers who know the power of cable advertising. Why should your business buy advertising on cable? 30 networks, demographic research, and zoned advertising. What does that mean? Effective advertising. Targeting your customers on the networks they watch. Best of all, it's affordable and works. Let one of our account executives put together a marketing plan that sells your business to your customers. Call 995-2711 and plug into cable. Made preparations continue here in Pasadena. A few thousand gallons of paint used to beautify the Rose Bowl field. Almost 106,000 people set to jam New Year's Day when Michigan takes on Washington State right here. Meanwhile, tonight on ESPN, the Holiday Bowl. Perhaps over the years, no bowl has provided wilder games, high-scoring, unpredictable results than the Holiday Bowl. Missouri in a bowl for the first time since 83. Colorado State champions of the WAC come in riding an eight-game winning streak. For a preview, we go to San Diego. Rich Walls, Rod Gilmore, and friends. Thanks, Chris. The deck of the USS Kitty Hawk with San Diego in the backdrop holiday bowl time.
top 20 teams in Colorado State and Missouri. Rich Waltz, Rod Gilmore, and 20 of our closest friends here in San Diego. Let's talk about Missouri first. Larry Smith's rebuilding process, they took a huge step forward this year at 7-4. and four. Well, Larry Smith does that all the time. He's done it at other places, USC, Tulane, and Arizona. What a surprise here. I don't think so. But he's got a great quarterback, Corby Jones. Corby Jones is perhaps the most dimensional quarterback in college football right now. He can throw it. He can run it. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate for next season. He had 2,500 yards in offense all by himself. Let's talk Colorado State. Sonny Lubick has a very good defense, a defense that's going to have to stop Corby Jones. Uh, forget about it. That won't happen. <laughs> the best way to deal with it is to keep the ball away from him. Kevin McDougal, Damon Washington, two great running backs. Together, they can keep the ball away from Corby Jones. I think the WAC has something to prove. They're 0-2 in bowl games. They haven't won this holiday bowl for a long time. Well, and if they don't get a win this time, they're going to get a lot of grief around the country for not having a strong team. This is their number one team. This is their best chance. All right, so it's Missouri, it's Colorado State, it's the holiday ball. Us two civilians will carry on. Chris? All right, thank you. Hey, Lee, he's been borrowing your stuff. Forget about it. You're not going to stop Corby Jones. Though. I like that Corby Jones. He's exciting as heck. Missouri is there for one reason. They're seven and four in a bowl game because quarterback Corby Jones has had a sensational year. He, he accounts for 55% of the Missouri offense, over 232 yards a game. I think one thing. Corby Jones is a great enough player that he can beat Colorado tonight by himself. He's a great player. Unless he's playing linebacker, I don't, I don't think they have a chance. <laughs> Their defense has struggled this year, and they're going up against an offense that has great balance. Kevin McDougal and Damon Washington, the one-two punch in the backfield, both went over 1,000 yards. And their quarterback is very experienced in bowl games. Moses Marino, over 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns. I think the balance attack of the Rams tonight is the difference in that game. Haven't seen too many bowl shootouts so far, except for Marshall and Ole Miss. But could tonight be. Could, could be, be typical holiday bowl. You remember there, Lee? You, you were there. 38-37. Meanwhile, it's the Alamo Bowl tomorrow on ESPN. The Builders Square game uh, matches Oklahoma State and Purdue. Both of those teams appearing in a bowl game for the first time in the 90s. Cincinnati, a long way from home this afternoon, up in Boise, but dominating Utah State. This is DeAndre Penner, the other quarterback for the Bearcats. He finds Cornelius Bonner, one of two Bonner touchdowns, 21-zip Bearcats. These teams are appearing in bowl games for the first time in the 90s. We're seeing Cincinnati and a long, long 46-year draft today, winning at halftime. Meanwhile, West Virginia not on that screen, but the Mountaineers have gone six bowl games without winning one. West Virginia 0-6 in their last six, and Georgia Tech has not been in a bowl game since 1991. They meet in the CarQuest Bowl. Amos Zaraway says he plans to play despite that injured foot, that freak accident in practice. He needs to go because Mark Bolger, the quarterback, although he threw for a lot of yards, one touchdown and three picks in the last three games. You're talking about quarterbacks. Georgia Tech goes into a ball game with a hot quarterback in Joe Hamilton. In the last four ball games, he's completed over 70% of his passes, six touchdowns. Interesting stat here. No interceptions in 112 attempts. I think the tech excitement gives them the advantage over West Virginia. Chris, I think you bring up a good point. I think the balance of West Virginia has been a very, very strong, strong thing for them offensively. Bulger has really stepped up as the quarterback. And the health of Am Amos Zaraway is key in this football game. If he's healthy, the Mountaineers definitely, I think, can win this football game. I think it's a morale game. Whoever is prepared better wins this football game because West Virginia and uh, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Tech struggled at the end of the year, losing to their arch rival. Exactly, and West Virginia returned a lot of tickets for this game, so the fan base not all that excited. Yeah, right. It's one of those morale games. You're right. If they want to come out and play and, and finally end a bowl losing streak, that's some motivation. <laughs> the second half from Boise is coming up. Utah State in a big hole to the Bearcats. That's after this. I was hurt. I feel like I've been taken. It's a split decision. Bell Ford and Birch Ford are going head-to-head -head for your business. And you're the winner during this year-end sales event. Financing as low as 1.9% available on over 800 new Fords. Plus, no payments for 90 days, only at Birch Ford and Bell Ford. Buy a new 1998 Windstar with seven passenger seating for $17,900. Lowest prices of the year, plus the lowest interest rates for 97 on over 2,000 cars, trucks, and vans. East side or west side and freeway close. Bell Ford, just off the I-17 at Bell Road. And Birch Ford, south of US-60 on Mesa Drive. I think there are a lot of good things on television. We have Cox Cable. There are a lot of shows that we watch together as a family. I think it's great. I've been really happy with them. We're becoming sports fans. The more you know about the game, the more you want to know what's going on. That's why we like Cox Cable. I mean, they just have so many games, and there's so much more information, and they just have better coverage, don't you think? And now we have the time to really explore the things we want to do. And we have to stay in touch and track investments, 
politics. That's why we like Cox Cable, because we can see the things we're going to do. To the needs of student athletes. Programs include degree completion scholarships, choices alcohol education grants, life skills, winning for life, and sports journalism scholarships. The NCAA Foundation, enhancing the present and future of student athletes. This message provided by the NCAA. Halftime at the Humanitarian Bowl, and so far it's all been Cincinnati. They lead the Utah State Aggies by a score of 21 to nothing. Craig Bullerjack back along with Mike Golick. And really, Mike, so far in the first 30 minutes has been a tale of two quarterbacks, which has kept Utah State's defense on the field for nearly 19 minutes. Boy, and I tell you, that Utah State defense has got to be tired. Versatility the key here. For Cincinnati, four players rushing over 20 yards, three receivers with over 20 yards each in receptions. Total yards for Utah State, 97. Demario Brown has accounted for 70 of those 97 yards. Let's talk about the first half and show you some highlights because really Cincinnati is not known as a passing team. They go to the two quarterback set and Plummer comes out and shows he can throw the football. Boy, he did. You know, we, and, and he is running well too, but I'm sure every now and then he likes to show his versatility throwing. And then you bring the, the young guy in, Deontay Kenner. They wanted to check his arm out. Well, there he reads the blitz beautifully and throws a beautiful strike. Here, Matt Sox had a tough, tough afternoon. Four of 15. There's one of his two interceptions. Tinker Keck gets the pickoff and then thinks he's returning a putt. A punt. He's got four punt returns for touchdowns. I'm sure he's got that going through his head. Gives, again, the Bearcats uh, some great, great field position. And, Mike, you look at the first half numbers. Uh, first downs dominated by Cincinnati. Rushing yards, passing yards. It's really 2-1 to one in total yards. 205 for the Bearcats. Only 97 for the Utah State Aggies. And a very, very uh, tough Utah State Aggie offense that averages uh, nearly 450 yards a game. And the, the big stat here, this is the first time in John L. Smith's career coaching here at Utah State he has been shut out in back-to-back -back quarters. I think time of possession there is key, and I think something else, Craig, that I know we've harped on it, but it, it's got to be said. As this game goes on, if Utah State is staying down, you know, I think there's going to be a little bit of rough time on that sideline with those coaches. I mean, you've got a lot of coaches leaving. I think it, it may, it could turn bad. Mike, you compare the two quarterbacks, Plummer 2 of 4, Kenner came in 5 of 9, 36 yards for Plummer, 59 for Deontay Kenner. Uh, touchdowns, one apiece, a total of 93 yards, but a team that averages 114, I'll tell you what, the head coach, Rick Minner over there, he's just uh, licking his chops. Well, this whole test was for Deontay Kenner. They knew Chad Plummer could play quarterback and wide receiver. This was to see how Kenner reacted. The true freshman, they love the way he throws the ball, and if he looked good in this game, then next year they plan to run this type of offense the whole year. Flags are down on the kick. Remember, Cincinnati won the toss to start this game. They wanted the football to start the third quarter. Chuck McFerrin will give us the call. Holding on the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. You know, if you just joined us, do not, I repeat, do <laughs> not adjust your television set. Boise State Broncos, uh, Bronco Stadium is the home to Boise State, and their colors, as you can tell, blue and orange. When you walk into the stadium, you go, hold on, where am I? But yes, this is the color of the turf, blue. And I think that would leave kind of a funny-looking turf burn. <laughs> it sure would. <laughs> Chad Plummer will start the third quarter as a Cincinnati quarterback. They lead by 21. And Cincinnati will start on the ground, and this will be a big test for Utah State here. You have to wonder what was said in the locker room. John L. Smith's final halftime speech to this ball club. Yeah, I, I really think there's going to be some friction. I know we have Holly Rowe on the sideline, and I'm sure she'll find out some of that information on their sideline just to see how the reaction of player and coach and assistant coaches, with all the assistant coaches going with them, is going to be as this game pro uh, progresses. Players may now start to think, hey, you know, this is it. They're leaving, you know, again, in one ear, out the other. The longer this game goes against Utah State, I think the worse it gets on their sideline. Daryl Royal, the lone back on second down. Plummer fires and throws complete to the 30-yard line. And D'Amato made the tackle. Well, Holly Rowe knows what happened inside that Utah State locker room. Let's check in. 
Well, John L. Smith is uncharacteristically being very quiet. He's letting his players take over. Demario Smith or Demario Brown took over. He was leader in the locker room. And then he led his team back out onto the field and said, let's take the field with some life. We're playing like we're dead out there. Let's go out with some style and quit playing like chumps. There's 30 minutes left to reprove ourselves. All right, thank you, Holly. I formation, third down, let's call it one. Plummer, the quarterback, wants to run the option. Little misdirection, and the Aggies, good downline pursuit by the guys in blue, and it's going to be a fourth down situation. Sean Hansen led the charge right in. That's a, that's a big stop for Utah State. They needed that down 21 nothing. And I really like what happened in that locker room, what Holly Rowe just told us. John L. Smith, he's going to be leaving. He turned it over to his team and said, all right, guys, this is your last half. You guys do what you have to do. And Demario Brown, again, 70 yards of their total, 97. I'm glad he stood up and let the players put it on their shoulders and kind of keep the coaches out of it. Doug Johnson will kick to Steve Smith, and we're very happy to have in the booth Jerry Kramer, played at Idaho, a draft pick of 1958, the fourth-round pick, and then went on with great career with the Green Bay Packers and has been here as part of the humanitarian bowl festivities. And you presented, Jerry, uh, the players into the uh, hall last uh, two nights ago, which was a very emotional uh, a night, I understand. I tell you, uh, Craig, it was a wonderful, wonderful evening. Billy Mills was an incredible inspiration. Uh, Mel Blunt, a story that you could spend a lifetime on. Kevin Johnson, another great story. These two young men from the University of Cincinnati, from Utah State, have already both uh, achieved a great deal of humanitarian good deeds in their life. So the whole evening was a very special evening. You know, and normally when, when you get a banquet with kids 18, 19, 20 years old, they lose interest pretty quick. In, in this one, they really held their focus. This was a wonderful evening and a wonderful message for young athletes and young people all across the country. And of course, that's what the Sports Humanitarian Hall of Fame is all about, the young athletes, and get them to focus on being a positive role model and have a positive impact on their society. It's a wonderful idea. You talked somewhat about the uh, this year's inductees, but it's a very impressive group. KJ, his mother was here. Uh, Mel Blunt, who has a fistful of Super Bowl rings, and uh, Billy Mills, who really turned the crowd on. Wonderful, wonderful group of guys. Billy started talking about Warriors, and then Mel Blunt came out and started talking about Warriors, and then KJ's presenter said there are three Warriors here tonight, and they're all working for the humanitarian Hall of Fame and for the humanitarians in, in life and in, in the country itself. So it was a wonderful evening. Well, was, you've got a couple of championship rings yourself. You ever win any on blue turf? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not used to playing in this kind of weather. This 51 degrees. Too uh, warm. The, yeah, it was minus 57 the last time I played in the championship game. Well, the troubles continue for Utah State. Demario Brown fumbled the football after another nice Aggie drive here to start the third quarter, but Cincinnati recovers. And, Jerry, let's take a look at the inductees. Uh, so far during the short, the short life of the humanitarian uh, Hall of Fame, which is located here in Boise, Idaho, and it's a great group, a great group of, uh, of people here. There, there have been so many wonderful athletes, Roberto Clemente, uh, Chichi Rodriguez, Dale Murphy, uh, Rafer Johnson, on and on and on. And I think Chiefy, uh, Chichi said it best. He said, Jerry, you know, winning is good for the pocketbook and, and good for the, the status, he said. But the Sports Humanitarian Hall of uh, Fame, that's good for the soul. Yes. And it's a great list of inductees. And uh, talking about this game, as we take a look at him right there, talking about this game, you have a head coach for Utah the State Aggies leaving with six of his coaches. What effect do you think, going back as a player, would that, would that have had, having knowing coaches after the last game? They're, I don't know if you want to say bailing out on you, but moving on, people that you trusted when they came into your home and recruited you. There's going to have to be an impact, Mike. There's no question about that. But John L. is a very emotional human being. He's a very, very hands-on guy. And if anybody is going to get his team ready to play the second half. John L. is going to get him ready to play the second half. And I think what we heard in the locker room was classic John L. And I expect to see a pretty good second half. All right, uh, Jerry Kramer, thanks so much for coming by. A class act. And uh, can I see you. the Super Bowl ring real yeah. quick? Oh, my. <laughs> I never got close. <laughs> All I do is look at everybody else's. <laughs> oh, count them. One, I two, three, done. I, I love them. That's great. <laughs> Jerry Kramer, thank thanks, you, sir. Jerry. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Mike. Clock continues to go, just under, well, just over 11 minutes to play third quarter. After the turnover, Cincinnati with that 21-point lead, trying to build on it. Plummer 
Dodges trouble, throws, fires, and complete down at the 31-yard line. And what an afternoon. Craig, Craig Miller on the coverage. Jason Collins-Baker with the reception. Again, you see the, the, uh, the mobility of a Chad Plummer. If he's not running the ball, he's in the pocket. He's scrambling in the pocket. What makes him so dangerous when he starts to scramble in the pocket, people can come off their coverage because he thinks he's going to run. And then, you know, he's, gotta, he's not a, a great, accurate quarterback with a great arm, but he's got a good enough arm to get the job done. He actually looks like he throws the ball better on the run. First down for the Bearcats at the 31. First man through the fullback, Landon Smith, 250-pound fullback. Plummer, 4 of 6 on the day for 58 yards. Doing a nice job at quarterback and wide receiver. Again, the big question was Deontay Kenner. And the, the kid is coming and throwing the ball nice. I think he's answering some questions for that Cincinnati staff to where next year they could pull this off a little more. And they said a lot of it depends on the team they play. Do they need to switch it up like this or do they just need to hammer the ball running where they can keep Plummer in? Do they need to throw a little bit more if they're down where they can put trust Deontay Kenner to throw the ball? Bob Coppola, the motion man. 9.54 to go. Big hole up the middle, rumbling like a tank is Cooper. Inside the 20 to this 17-yard line and another first down for Cincinnati. Craig Miller came up to make the stop. The well, junior quarterback. Watch this, number 66 on the pull. He hits D'Amato and just opens up the hole. Big 66, that's Ken Big, 6'5", 290 pounds. Again, this whole line averaging 306 pounds. And they're doing a job. Not only they can come off the ball, but you see Biggs pulling that big body around the center and coming up field and making a block. When you can block in space like that, you know, it, it, to, to just come ahead and road grade is one thing, but to be able to move your feet and block in space, that's something else. Robert Cooper needing some help off the field after that run. Now flags come out. Well, we got a, well, somebody threw a, Souvenir football on the field. Good arm. Sure did. They made it a long way. And I'm not going to make a Matt Sock <laughs> reference right now. <laughs> I won't do that to him. It has been a tough day for Aggie, for the Aggie offense. This could be the start of a, of a nail in a coffin if the Cincinnati puts this one in the end zone. To look at Chad Plummer. Again, they're going to ground it up on the ground. Royal, a couple of yards down, close to the 15-yard line. Damato again on the tackle. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, at halftime, I had a chance to speak with Rick Minter and ask him how his great quarterback experiment was going. He said he's very pleased. He thinks Deontay Kenner is showing extraordinary poise especially during blitz situations, but he wasn't happy with his team. He said they're shooting themselves in the foot. We should be up by a lot more right now than just 21 nothing. <laughs> we talked to Coach uh, Minter yeah. yesterday. He's a very serious, hard-nosed guy, loves his kids. You know, he comes from Notre Dame uh, as a defensive coordinator. Your turf, big fella, at one time back in 92-93, he had a pretty good couple football teams. Yeah, he had a 21-2 record there and a couple of nice bowl games. We'll take a break. Bearcats by 21. that best for america's most elite firefighters Woo! but for their leader it was a prison break take me down this time the enemy is not nature kill him how we wrong why don't we see if you're still not a fly firestorm rated r january 9th only in theaters who loves team cheerios the stingrays were stung by him down south, the Barracudas are chomping them down. The Sharks are in a frenzy for them. Teams all over gave Team Cheerios a tryout, and they loved it. Because it's three awesome O's teamed up and sweetened up with frosting and brown sugar for an amazing sweet crunch your team will love. Don't forget the mighty sand crabs. 
<laughs> yeah, they dug right in. Team Cheerios, the taste your team will love. And when you find a positive desire, something happens inside. You unleash incredible passion. And it's that positive passion, Billy, that allows you to accept defeat in life, and it's not failure. It's that positive passion that allows you to pursue excellence all while you accept defeat. And ultimately, that pursuit of excellence takes you to victory. Every coach we talk to, every player, they want his speech in their back pocket. He was holding oh. those kids. I mean, you could just see in their eyes just, just the attention that they had. It was a great, great speech. Billy Mills, Kevin Johnson, and Mel Blunt. This year's inductees into the Humanitarian Hall of Fame here in Boise. Plummer walks in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. That was way too easy. I'll tell you, I, I, I think I could have ran that one in. I think I actually could have ran that one in. Yeah, what, what happens here is Donald Deco, number 45, overruns the play. It's just an option. Everybody's got a man. You're going to see on the uh, on the option coming, Deco is going to come number 45. He's going to overrun the play and just going to cut it right back inside. We'll get a look at that after the kick. Joe Judge will try the point after to make it 28 to nothing and right down the highway. Plummer has had a plum day. That was way, way too easy. Way too easy. Got offsides on Utah State. There he is. Boy, Chad Plummer. Yeah, the Cordell Stewart of college football right now. He can run, he can pass, he can catch it. We'll be back. Everyone remembers this college highlight, but I bet you've never seen these. North Carolina quarterback Chris Keldorf counseling teenagers. LSU soccer star Amanda Cook on the Student Athlete Advisory Board. Iowa wrestler Joe Williams exploring options at career day. Most college athletes never go pro. They need a program that builds business skills, a commitment to service, and academic excellence. Champs Life Skills, helping prepare student athletes for life. How do you keep the world's leading companies 100% satisfied? Just make them 100% successful. That's how Siebel has become the global leader in information systems for world-class sales, marketing, and customer service organizations. We do whatever it takes to make sure our customers are 100% satisfied, 100% successful. Siebel, the global leader in sales, marketing, and customer service systems. How did you get down here? <laughs> Ma? Did you eat your chunky soup? Yeah, Ma. Chunky beef with country vegetables. With more beef than any other soup. Mmm, lean beef, potatoes, vegetables. Chunky always hits the spot. Where'd you get that outfit? Can't talk, gotta go. Just want to make sure you're eating good. That's my mom. Oh, yeah? Which one? Campbell's Chunky Soup. It's loaded with beef. National Car Rental Bowl Week continues as Wisconsin takes on Georgia in the Outback Bowl. Wisconsin, Georgia, Thursday at 11 on ESPN. Chad Plummer has thrown and ran for a touchdown. One reason why Cincinnati leads by 28. This was a nice play, and you're going to see how it gets set up. His inside traffic is going to get cut off right about here. Number 45, Donald Deco gets caught in a situation. He's got Bashir Levingson out there, but he's caught. Where do I go? I got no help in here. Do I help out here? Do I come back? He's caught in no man's land. Plummer sees that and just cuts right back. And Deco's left holding the bag. I mean, he's trying to help Levingston on the outside because there's a lead blocker, and he gets no pursuit from his inside linebacker, so he's really left on an island. Well, Plummer on the day, 33 yards rushing, 58 yards passing, 38 yards in reception yardage for a total of 129 yards of total offense 129 326 off the clock Cincinnati has scored and scored quickly in this football game boy they really have and, and one thing we're looking at we talked at the top conferences Big West Conference USA these teams playing more for just the Cincinnati and Utah State they're playing for that national recognition from their conference and right now Conference USA is really really making a big big statement about the type of football they play 
seen steady improvement. We take a look at Rick Minner of his teams over the years he's been there. Now his goal obviously is to find a permanent home for the first, second, third place finishers of Conference USA. Salk is going to go up top quickly and caught but incomplete by Nakia Jenkins at midfield. What ball hung up there? Big rainbow. Sean Ferguson on coverage of Nakia Jenkins. Jenkins, 73 catches on the year, one today. Salk has missed him a couple of times wide open, but really he's been covered very well. And this is the type of defense, again, Cincinnati comes after people, and they put a lot of pressure on their cornerback. You know, Mike, we talked to Bob Petrino, uh, the offensive coordinator. His word on Nakia is, hey, he had a great week of practice. Great practices mean great games. And so far for Nakia, it has not been. Now he's got to get his quarterback to get him the ball. Mario Brown up the middle. Still, he's a tough. You cannot Boy, tackle him yeah. the first man through. Uh, it takes a couple to get Demario Brown down, tackled by Philip Curry. You know, unfortunately, he's really the only player that, you know, you talked about, Holly talked about emotion they had in the locker room. Demario Brown right here carrying the ball is the one that stood up and spoke up. Look at the way he's running, churning those legs, not going down. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people following his lead. He's got 12 rushes on the day for 53 yards, and he's really the only one playing with a lot of that drive and emotion. Averages over five yards a carry on the season. Third down, five. Salk throws and fires complete. Hooks up with Steve Smith, still on his feet. Breaks a tackle. Another. He said to the sidelines, got Stevie Smith's got speed. Smith down the sideline. Touchdown, Aggies. Seventy-five yards. But, I mean, he must have run 120. What a great, great job, and a great job of Nakia Jenkins blocking downfield at the end. Salk does a nice job reading coverage. This time, Smith is a slot man, and they're playing off of him. He says, all I need is five yards. I'll hit him with a quick hitch. Does a nice job of reading that, and that is the first third down conversion that the Aggies have had today, and it turns in to hopefully seven points after the kick. Bond will kick the extra point. Daryl Young, the holder, 75 yards and the kick is true and the drought ends at the 731 mark of the third quarter utah state on the board well here he is in the slot and they see him playing off so it's just a little five yard hitch get the first down get down but smith says uh-uh we're down way too much i'm gonna get all i can and he does he cuts a back, back breaks one two three four five six count along if you want that's seven there's eight. And now look at Nakia Jenkins down the sideline getting the last block to free up Smith to the end zone. A good job blocking downfield after seven broken tackles. Able to shade Artrell Hawkins, the corner. And now the two can celebrate. Nakia Jenkins throwing a block for his running mate, Steve Smith. Well, ESPN College Basketball tomorrow, 5.30. ESPN, Clemson and Western Kentucky. Clemson led by the nation's best backcourt. Terrell McIntyre, how about this? 45% from behind the three-point line. Greg Buckner leads the team in scoring is Clemson and Western Kentucky on the deuce tomorrow. Well, Utah State, you see right there, they're used to scoring quick. They haven't been able to do it today, but during the season, almost half of their scoring drives have taken uh, less than two minutes. Uh, this one, three plays, 80 yards in a buck eight. Let's see what kind of turnover that has for the Utah State defense in stopping Cincinnati. Well, Hawkins breaks it on the kick and is knocked out of bounds at the 39, call it the 40. So a fine return. Cincinnati, this has been the story for the Bearcats all day fine field position on every possession. And even though you got 721 left in the third quarter and a whole nother 15 minutes left in the game, so over 22 minutes, this is a big, big series. Your offense just has a big play. Your defense has been on the field a long time. They need to make a stand. Tony Diamato has been playing well in the middle. Uh, John Dale Cardi has been asked to do a lot at free safety. Now, guys like Ben Crossland have got to step up. The linemen have got to step up and not let this option take effect. Deontay Kenner, the quarterback, bad pitch, picked up. Royal has it. It's a busted play, trying to make something out of nothing. And the Aggies swarming down at the 32-yard line, so a big loss of eight. Jeremy Hunt Loveless led that Aggie charge, but not a good pitch by the freshman. 
That was a, a nice job of pursuit. Again, you see Loveless with, with the penetration. It, it, just a bad pitch. Basically, just a bad pitch goes around. Again, they got lucky. The bounce comes right back to the running back. Numbers on Hunt Loveless, 64 tackles on the season. Tackles for losses, four for nine yards. Second down, a loss of eight. Skinner swings it out of the backfield, hooks up. Oh, what a run. Royal got the yardage back and then some to the 46-yard line. D'Amato chased him down. Normally, this is, can be a hot route at the end, but this is planned all the way because look at the offensive linemen that end up in front of them. This is a swing pass. It's almost like a quick screen. Watch the linemen get out in front of them. You see number 63, Vince Bird, getting out. Number 79 is out there, Don Scheithe. This is a planned play all the way. A lot of times, it's a late hot route. This time, it's almost like a quick, wide screen. Third down and five. Clock hits the six-minute mark of the third quarter. 28-7, Cincinnati. Kenner, the quick step and the quick hitch, and he hooks up with Jason Collins Baker, number 83 out of Detroit, Michigan. You see Kenner took another shot there. Again, he'll hang in the pocket. He's got a nice arm on him. You know, there's only two, when he was a senior in high school, only two high school players that threw for more yards than him. Redmond, who was at Louisville, who now John L. Smith mm -hmm. is going to coach, and some guy named Tim Couch at Kentucky mm -hmm. threw for, oh, a million or so Tim yards. Tim Couch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Kenner, Kenner was right behind uh, those two players. 7 of 11, 78 yards, and a touchdown to Bonner. Got him wide open. Down the middle, hooks up with Plummer. Well, that's the third time today the two quarterback tandems who switch off, if you've been watching from start to finish here, John L. Carty made the tackle, but those two, They've got something special. They, they, they're they reading each other's eyes and the break and good throw across the middle. Well, they really do, and, and they do. They're on the same wavelength right now. What happens here, it's a nice move over the middle, but John Del Cardi, number three, he's the free safety. He goes with the fake. It's a fake away from uh, where Plummer is, and then it's a play-action pass. Cardi falls for it. He flows that way, and that gives Plummer the middle of the field absolutely wide open. Kenner puts it there. Kenner comes off the field. Plummer, after the reception, goes back to play quarterback. And usually that means ground game. Orlando Smith picks up five, six yards to the 15-yard line. Deco made the tackle for Utah State. Well, I hope after uh, this season, all of these running backs, Landon Smith, Darrell Royal, Orlando Smith, Robert Cooper, take all these offensive linemen out and buy them some nice meals because this offensive line does a nice job of just moving the pile and letting these guys run downhill. It's a big offensive line. There's a few subs in there getting a chance to play. Vince Bird, number 63, is over at left guard now. Doug Rossfield is the center. Not much this time for Royal. Ben Crossland shot the gap and knocked him down. And if it's my memory is wrong, tell me, is that the first time we've called Ben Crossland's name? Maybe first or second time. You know, he has uh, not had a big impact in this game. You see he's up at the top right here. He'll make penetration in comes back the play is actually supposed to go wide he comes underneath which you can get away with if you're quick enough because you do have contain he comes underneath the block does the right thing gets back out wide and makes the play they need more plays like that from Ben Crossman. Yeah, he's been a durable player for John L. Smith making his 38th consecutive start Cincinnati 3 7 of 12 on third down conversion the slant Kenner came in and threw a bullet that time they used Chad Plummer. He was in the slot as a decoy. He runs an out pattern to take the pressure off. You see Deco running out of there. Where Deco's running out, number 45, Cornelius Bonner just fills in. It's a nice job. It's a little crossing route to try and take the defensive back out of the zone you want to throw. Chad Plummer, as a slot man now, does the job, takes Deco out of the play, and Kenner puts the ball on the mark. Inside the 20. Four of five today for four touchdowns. Three and a half minutes to go. The motion man is Bonner. Plummer hands off Orlando Smith. Nothing. But he keeps driving. Wow. Picks up three. Oh, he was stood up straight at the line of scrimmage. But second effort gives him three yards. That's a wide body there in Orlando Smith. And here's, here's a great story as we watch Orlando Smith just bullying up the middle. He originally signed a few years ago with Michigan State. He failed his entrance exam. And on his own, 
on his own money, became a part-time student at the University of Buffalo to get his grades back up. And Cincinnati was right there to offer him a scholarship. And he hurt his ankle, had some injury problems. And they said he has practiced the best out of the last 12 days of the other running backs, Robert Cooper and Del Royal. And he got the start, and it's paying off today. There's an official's timeout, ninth play of this drive coming up. Second down. Very deflating for uh, Utah State after coming off the big score. Here's where you need your defense to come up with that big, uh, big stand. And the Cincinnati offense, as you just said, nine plays already, or ninth play coming up of the drive, just taking the win right back out of the sails. Plummer is the quarterback. Landon Smith, the fullback, with Orlando Smith behind him. Plummer wants to throw. Protection all day, all day. Fires incomplete. Smart play. Plummer had a man in the vicinity, threw it into the turf. No way the Aggies could pick it. That's a very, very smart play. Covered, probably double covered. There's a flag down on the other side of the field, but a smart play by Plummer to get rid of the ball and not get the intentional grounding call. But we have an illegal man downfield, which happened, which can happen a lot of times when, when he's scrambling that much, especially with a Chad Plummer who likes to run. Now, he starts to scramble. The offensive linemen think, hey, he's going to run the ball. I'm going to go down and get a block. Chad Plummer pulls it back and throws. You got yourself a little bit of confusion and in a little bit of trouble. Well, Plummer will now go to the wideout. Kenner back in at quarterback. Ineligible downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined to be third down. What's impressive for Cincinnati is they have only been practicing this type of offense, switching uh, Kenner and Plummer for 12 days. And it looks like they've been practicing it for 12 months. I mean, it is really, really running smooth. They call that 12, the 12 days of December. <laughs> they've done a fine job. Third down goal from the seven-yard line. Kenner, they throw the blitz at him, swings it out. Here comes Orlando Smith rumbling in. That right there is just a nice play call. And that's from uh, offensive coordinator Greg Seaman. He just lines up all his receivers to the left, gets all the defensive backs over there, and does a quick little shot out to Orlando Smith. Makes a nice run into the end zone. That's a, that's a nice call as we take a look at John L. Smith as he sees almost a spark in his team and kind of snuffed out by the Bearcats. Orlando Smith had one rushing touchdown during the regular season. The kick by Judge is up and good. And so Cincinnati, after giving up the touchdown to Utah State, they pick the seven points right back. 2.28 to go in the quarter. And the Bearcats lead the Aggies of Utah State 38 to 7. I rolled the dice for eight. It's Arizona's biggest party. Tostitos brings you college football's biggest party and Tempe Tostitos Fiesta Bowl block party. One dual ticket gets you both great events. Pre-game. The nation's largest pre-game party starts at noon New Year's Eve day with thousands of spirited fans, food, drink, interactive games, and entertainment. Post-game. Okay. The Tempe Tostitos Fiesta Bowl block party. Six big stages featuring these national bands. The giant Tostitos chip drops at midnight. Two big events, one dual ticket. Call the Fiesta Bowl ticket office at 350-0911 to take advantage of this special $10 price. Time is always delivering us something new. That's its beauty. Things change. But not everything that time brings us is welcome. Terminal illness is something that a family can feel forever. That's why there is Hospice of the Valley. Our medical, emotional, and spiritual support helps families survive. Life keeps going. That's its beauty. But please, no swimsuits. Yeah, no bikinis. No one pieces. No thongs. None of that. All new. Tastefully done. But definitely all new. That's important. Very important. Yeah. To be tasteful. State Capitol, Boise, Idaho. 
ever been up north here, this is a beautiful, beautiful college town. Great things to do, many things to see. Absolutely beautiful. You see the mountains in the background, and, and today the snow has stayed on the mountains and has not made its way here. <laughs> uh, high fives, handshakes for Orlando Smith. By the way, that was not a pass. The official stats tell us it was a lateral, so they're going to count it as a running touchdown. Right. Well, Orlando Smith would probably rather have a running touchdown. Yeah, he'll take that. He's a, he's a running back. Absolutely. No return for Utah State. They trail 35-7. to seven. Well, you look at total plays. Cincinnati's run 62 total plays. Utah State only 33. I mean, that's, that's, number one, a long time for the Aggie defense to be on the field. And a short time for that offense to make some plays, even though they are big play offense. This defense from Cincinnati has done a nice job of shutting down Matt Salk and the Aggies. Salk averaging 263 yards a game during the season. Stifled today. Great play fake. Wide open. Nakia Jenkins makes a turn. Bumped out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That stops the clock with 2.16 to go in the third quarter. Let's go downstairs and check in with Holly. Craig, you've been talking about all day what an outstanding job athletically Chad Plummer of Cincinnati is doing at both the quarterback and the wide receiver position. But let's talk about mentally. He has to know all the plays. He has a lot of latitude at the line of scrimmage to call plays. He says every time he goes to the line, he has three or four plays in mind in case the defense is doing something, he wants to change it. But then he has to line up out of the wide receiver spot, know the route, know the plays from that angle as well. So a tough day mentally and physically for Chad Plummer. Good point, Holly. Uh, he knows that uh, playbook very well. Again, hooking up. Jenkins bumped out at the 40 by Tinker Keck. And the Aggies, Mike, in this third quarter, have shown signs of putting their offense together. But you got to think, too, the 35 points you see on the board, uh, Utah State trying to answer back with some tough defense. These guys just been on the field way too long. And what's happening also, you see him starting to hit a couple of nice passes, but the Cincinnati defense is starting to play back a little bit. They're playing off. They're not as aggressive. They'll probably mix in now a few blitzes now that the Aggies have completed a few passes. They're going to say, all right, enough's enough. We're going to come in, come after you, and shut you down. Soft 8 of 20. Hooks up, finds Stevie Smith, breaks a tackle, turns it to the inside, and chased out of bounds at the... 15-yard line. Hawkins, number 21. But Steve Smith continues to impress. He has great breakaway speed after the catch. But this guy, five foot eight, 167 pounds. He's a guy you almost really want to get up on the line and mug. Here he's in open space. Look at the little shake and bake. Oh, he, he absolutely dusts Eric Harper, the strong safety, and moves on down. So throws a little stiff arm there to say, okay, I might be 167 pounds, but I can throw down a little with you. He's a guy you might really want to get up on the line and jam before he can use his speed. Melvin Blue, number six, who did a fine job backing up Demario Brown during his injury checks in. They swing it out. They hook it up to the tight end. DeMooney. And DeMooney inside the five. No, they're going to mark him down at the six-yard line. Wanga de Mooney. Big tight end, weighs around about 265, a junior out of Monterey. Played at Dixie Junior College. This is the offense that we've expected to see off the bat from uh, a team like Utah State that averages 280 yards. Passing a game, mixing it up. You're seeing slants, you're seeing outs, you're seeing drop-offs to the tight end. Unfortunately, it may be too little too late for him. Inside the red zone, 41 opportunities this year. They've come away with 30 touchdowns. Salk looks one way, looking the other. He may have to tuck and run. He does. Bumps his own lineman and gets back to the five-yard line. Picks up one the hard way. Philip Curry, the middle linebacker. With a, no, Here's Philip Curry, nearly 500 career tackles, 487 before today's and, game. And to play middle linebacker in this system, in this 46 type of defense system, he has to be almost the smartest man on the field. The middle linebacker and the free safety, which is Tinker Keck, they're the ones calling the plays. They're directed, directing traffic. Blue into the line. And that's a pileup, folks. To the four, Curry again in on the tackle. Curry is the first Bearcat with four straight 100 tackle season. I mean, that's, that's incredible. You stay healthy for one, but a six-footer, 240 pounds on a Pontiac. 
He is something else, and he shared the team MVPs with uh, his linebacker mate, Brad Jackson. The two of them make a very formidable uh, pair of linebackers, not only in Conference USA, but the nation. Blue breaks it. Touchdown. Well, Melvin Blue, the last five games, 82 carries, nearly 500 yards, and now seven touchdowns. Blue has done a fabulous job in that backfield, helping out Demario Brown during some injury time. Well, and Demario Brown, we've seen running all day, churning those legs. Blue does the same thing on this touchdown run. He's hitting the line, doesn't stop his legs, and breaks it to the outside and almost walks into the end zone. A nice drive by Utah State, even though I think Cincinnati backed off on their coverage a little bit. They still did a nice job getting down and sticking it in the end zone. Vaughn could not connect on the extra point. So it's 35-13. You see it's going to be a mosh pit right in the middle of the field here. He says, okay, it's not happening here. Look at he keeps the legs going. Keeps him going and breaks to the outside. Arm tackling going on by Cincinnati. And he walks in for the easy score. There's Melvin Blue. Had nine rushing touchdowns during the regular season. ESPN continues its bowl week coverage. The Alamo Bowl tomorrow at 8 o'clock. 24th ranked Oklahoma State and doubles ranked quarterback Tony Lindsay. Tackles 16th ranked Purdue and the Big Ten's best aerial combo and Billy Dickin and Brian Alford. Bull week continues tomorrow. Look at Melvin Blue getting a little congratulations on the sideline. He ranks in the top 10 in uh, the Big West Conference in four different categories. A versatile, versatile player is high. A 224 yard output against Idaho. So he can run. I mean, they have some running backs to mix in with the passing game, but. It just has not been clicking for Utah State today. You know, Dave Arcelanian, who will take over as the head coach after today's game for John L. Smith, you get Demario Brown back next year along with Melvin Blue and Tamar Johnson, who's a freshman running back. You've got a pretty good uh, threesome back there in the, in the backfield. Flags are down. Don McKnight the return man to the 21, but a flag is down at the 30-yard line. And on what you said, you wonder if they stay a passing team, even though the Big West is a passing conference. Matt Salk, he uh, he graduates. The freshman redshirt of Brian Benza will take over next year, but they do have a nice stable of running backs. This may turn into more of a running team. And Brian Benza, as you mentioned, the redshirt freshman, good athlete. He has a lot of potential. 10-yard penalty. First down. And, of course, an option quarterback in high school. A reminder once again, the Alamo Bowl, 24th ranked Oklahoma State, the Cowboys taking on the Boilermakers of Purdue, ranked 16th in the country. That's tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. The Bull Blitz. How about Purdue? Yeah. What a, what a shock they had this year. Good for them. Unfortunately, when I was at Notre Dame, they took us to task a couple of times. Joe Tiller, the former Cowboy head coach of Wyoming, doing a fine job rebuilding. Saw uh, Tepper, the old coach there down at uh, LSU now. Their, their coordinator was actually writing down the defensive schemes he wanted, and there was an interpreter there because he hadn't learned the LSU mm -hmm. signals yet, so he's writing down what they wanted and having an interpreter to send it down to the field last night in their victory over Notre Dame. Whatever it takes, <laughs> huh? We played three quarters. We'll come back to Boise after this. Just working. Where are you? I'm at the new double tree. <gasps> Don't forget to bring home the cookies. Front desk, can I get more cookies? Double tree and AT&T working together to bring you quality time. How'd you like to have an exciting new career delivered right to your door? Then call this toll-free number and find out how easy it is to train at home for a better career. There's absolutely no obligation. At ICS, more than 10 million men and women have trained for job promotions and new careers without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And now, at home, in your spare time, you can get your career diploma or even your degree. Choose from any one of these courses. High school, computer programming, child daycare, auto mechanics, medical office assistant, medical transcriptionist, animal care specialist, electrician, PC specialist, interior decorating, PC repair, catering, TV VCR repair, legal assistant, dental assistant, electronics, 
fitness and nutrition, air conditioning repair, bookkeeping, private investigator, pharmacy technician, or get your degree. You can major in business management or accounting. Compare your present salary with the money you could be making in any one of these careers. They'll be repeated for you at the end of this commercial. To have your pencil ready to jot down the course you are most interested in. Then call the ICS toll-free number and we'll send you one of these exciting career packs absolutely free. Your career pack explains how easy it is to study at home and tells you about the many opportunities available to people who train through ICS to get better jobs. And that's not all. You'll also see the exciting learning materials included in your course at no extra cost. They make it easy and fun to train for that better career. Here are those courses again, so call today for free information. Call now for free information with no obligation. Then decide if you want to train at home for a better career to make more money or advance in your present job. Call 1-800-215-1684. Operators are on duty now to send you this free information. Choose from any one of these exciting careers and call 1-800-215-1684 for free career information. Call now 1-800-215-1684. That's 1-800-215-1684. We're back in Boise. Fourth quarter underway. Humanitarian Bowl. The first annual Cincinnati 35. Utah State 13. Craig Bullerjack back along with Mike Golick and Holly Rowe. It has been an interesting combination, if you just joined us, of just quarterbacks who have come in and done a a fabulous job switching off plumber can play QB and then switch it off and and play wide receiver the the freshman Deontay Kenner has come in yeah again this is the experiment that Cincinnati came into the game with the true freshman Deontay Kenner playing quarterback Chad Plummer going to receiver and it's been very very successful today so something I, I think they're going to use a lot next year really according to the team they're going to play well a timeout called Plummer didn't like the defensive set of Utah State we'll take a break and come back don't go away. Running is the fastest way to burn fat if you follow these simple steps. Running will power up your energy reserve if you know what pace is best for you. Running will trim your love handles, hips and thighs if you call now for this free book, The Complete Runner's Guide, designed for all levels, even if you've never taken a stride. This guide delivers maximum results in minimum time. It's free with your paid subscription to Runner's World. Every issue gets you going with new ideas on improving your performance to finding the perfect shoe. Call for your risk-free trial issue of Runner's World. If you like it, get 11 more for just $17.97. If you're not satisfied, cancel, owe nothing, and keep the free issue. You. Call now and get a second book free. Burn fat faster. Tone your abs. Lose weight. Drop body fat. The secrets are here. You can burn fat. Gain more energy. Sculpt your body. If you call Runner's World now. Call 1-800-848-2200 now. They clean your house. Polish your floors. Shine your furniture. Correct your errors and can kill your kids. The everyday household products your kids are sniffing to get high have always been right under your nose, too. Talk to your kids about the dangers of sniffing. Four eighteen to play in the Humanitarian Bowl. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. It's uh, good to have that fur hat on here in Boise, Idaho. 35 <laughs> 13 Cincinnati Chad Plummer has been outstanding as quarterback and wide receiver and you just look at this snow-capped foothills right here by the way yeah and over here those yeah. are the ruts you left trying to ski yesterday yeah I wasn't on my skis a whole lot I know you were not backside a little bit <laughs> and yes the turf is blue the only blue turf in college football they swing it out that's number 86 with the reception. Roderick Monroe, the tight end. Cardi made the tackle. There he is, number three for Utah State. And Mike, you look through three quarters. The biggest stat jumping right out at you is the tie. My Absolutely, goodness. yeah. Because Utah State is starting to, to catch up in first down and total yards, but a couple of things almost du over double in time of possession and three turnovers uh, Utah State has had has re resulted in 14 points for Cincinnati. Maybe the biggest stat of all. When Cincinnati leads after three quarters, they're 5-0. Oh. 
Not much. Crossland, for the second time, does the old swim move, comes down and shoots the gap and gets the sack. You know, we talked about the matchup with Ben Crossland, the uh, all-conference. And what he does, he's going to make a move right inside. He's on Jason Fabini, who outweighs him by 30 pounds. He said, well, you know what? You're bigger than me and can take me on head up. I'm going to come inside. And that's a smart move because Jason Fabini, the 6'7", 322-pounder for Cincinnati, has been having a good day against Ben Crossland. You see, he's 277 pounds. So he's given up a good 40, 50 pounds. Crossland had a beautiful year here, defensive player of the year in the Big West. But he's been quiet today, a few tackles. And it seems to do it when he's slanting and moving more than just going straight ahead. Also a third team, All-America. Kenner back in, throws out to uh, Chad Plummer. Ball's incomplete. Dico was on coverage. Now Crosland has made a name for himself in Aggie Blue, but maybe the biggest name ever to wear Utah State Aggie Blue. There he is. Merlin Olson, 59-61, the Outland Trophy winner, and of course, since then, he's grown a few hairs on that face. And you remember the old FTV commercial. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got a two current players, Louis Aguiar from the Chiefs, Kevin Alexander from the Giants, Greg Cragen, Carolina Panthers, and Rich Tilski with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Four players right now uh, from Utah State that are in the pros. Alexander, a fine wide receiver. Aguiar, he's got a pretty good foot for Kansas City. Sure does. Taking on the Broncos in Kansas City. This weekend, Kenner, the freshman, stands, fires, rainbow up top. Oh, diving catch incomplete. The intended receiver, and he was stretched to the limit, was Jason Collins Baker, the freshman wideout from Detroit. Tough throw for the freshman quarterback. He was trying to drop that one in. No need to put this on a rope. This is a touch pass. You see a nice little loft on the ball. Watches it take off, and it's just out of the reach of Jason Collins Baker. Pretty nice touch though, just a little long. Doug Johnson back at his own five yard line. Utah State should have five field position after this punch. Steve Smith at his own 37. High snap. Ball loose, picked up, going in. Aggies get a break. It's Brent Passy, 44, the freshman linebacker. 10-yard return for the touchdown, and Johnson never had a chance to punt that ball. You saw a quick little adjustment right at, right before the snap where Utah State brought a couple more guys up to the line, confused the Cincinnati blocking team. Johnson never a chance to get that one off. Now what was turning out to be a blowout now with 13.02 to go. Interesting ball game begin, beginning to develop here at the Humanitarian Bowl, and they're going to go for two down, 35-19. So you connect two here, it's a two-touchdown game. Sock going the other way. Put two on the board. McBride pulls it down. 35-21 with 13.02 to play. Well, we have a little discussion here with the referees first. Nice play, though, to bring it within two touchdowns if it stands. They have ourselves a little bit of a ball game here now. You know, after what I saw over the weekend with the Giants, it's not over until, until it's, it's over. All zeros on that scoreboard. Vikings with it just oh. incredible, incredible comeback. Almost looked like they were trying to give the way a game, give the game away at first. Chuck McFerrin will give us the call. On the play, there was illegal touching by the offense. That's loss of down. No good. Oh, and the fire still burns in John L. Smith. Boy, he is hot. You have to control himself so he doesn't pick up the flag that could hurt him a little here. They're still within a couple of touchdowns if they can convert a two-point conversion. Illegal touching. We'll take a look at that to see what... That's a call you don't see much. Well, you know what it might have been? McBride may have been on the line of scrimmage like a tight end, meaning, but at the end of the line, not be an eligible receiver. Let's take a look at the block part. Well, really, it wasn't even a, he never really had a chance. It comes from the outside, and you see Johnson never really has a chance 
he pulls it down because he knows it's going to get blocked. It's actually a smart move if he could have just sidestepped, but he loses the ball altogether. Passy picks it up and goes the easy 10 yards. Never had a chance to punt the ball again. Johnson really did the right thing by pulling it down, but then he lost control of the ball. As he says, thank you very much. We'll make this a two-touchdown game. John Del Cardi brought the uh, the pressure to cause the fumble, and the, the steam is still rising off the neck of John L. Smith. Well, I think McBride was lined up on the line and not in an eligible receiver position. That, that's what I think happened there, because they tried a, a weird kind of an offensive set because the whole play started one way and then went back. A, it, it was a throwback to McBride. I think he was an eligible receiver on that. As soon as he catches it, it is illegal touching. Brad Vaughn has it teed up. Good, strong kick. At the goal line is Hawkins. Hawkins brings it near side. Tackle down at the 19-yard line. Well, ESPN continues its bowl week coverage tonight. Make sure you tune in to the Holiday Bowl. WAC champion Colorado State taking on well, the surprising Tigers of Missouri. Tigers ranked 20th in the country, Colorado State number 17, ESPN. Tune it in for all the Bull Week excitement. What an exciting team, uh, Missouri. Everybody remembers that game against Nebraska when they lose it with the kick in yeah. the end zone. Wow, that was that was an incredible game. Boy, Sonny Lubick has done fabulous things with the Rams of Colorado State. Former the quarterback. Nothing fancy. Diamato. We have called his name. We're going into uh, double digits easily for Tony Diamato. Yeah, Robert he, Cooper, the running back. He has made, made a lot of plays. And, of course, your middle linebacker should be the leading tackler. And, again, we talked about John Dale Carter at free safety making too many. But Diamato, 124 on the year. Six foot 240. He's just, he is just a fire plug that can actually move. And he can really, really fill a hole. Block running going up on the 12 minute mark, second and nine. One with a pitch, hauled in by Cooper. Could not turn the corner. Good downline pursuit led by Bashir Levingston. You know, we're seeing, a, we're seeing a little excitement by Utah State. We haven't seen it the whole game. This is great pursuit. Again, just flowing down the line, flowing down the line, giving them nowhere to run. A good job by Levingston coming up and filling. First, Deco eats up the lead block, and Levingston is right there to make the play. Yeah, Bashar, Livingston, second team, all Big West. Let's go downstairs and Holly. First time in the game that I have seen energy on the Utah State sideline. All of the players are standing up. Matt Scott just went along to all of his offensive players and said, hey, next time we score, we're going for two. So finally, some energy from the Aggies. Long time coming today. Kenner dumps it over the middle, complete. And a first down for Cincinnati after the fine run by Cornelius Bonner. Craig Miller brought him down. Nice play. The linebackers just cleared out of there way too fast and left the uh, right right behind the line. Look at how quick the linebackers are going to get out of there. 46, and they're all they're all out of there. He's blitzing. They're gone. There's nobody there. Kenner sees that and said, okay. He has learned very well throw where they're coming from. He sees the blitz. He sees where they're coming from. He knows he's going to get a receiver to go that way, and he puts it right where they were. 13-yard pickup. Now, Kenner, look at that. 10 of 15, 125 yards, and a touchdown to Bonner. I think we can deem the experiment a success at this point. Reverse Plummer. Throw it. Going to throw it back. Aggie's trying to read it defensively. Plummer's got good speed. Guns incomplete. A little trickery, and Utah State didn't bite. Utah State's doing a good job now of, of staying home, keeping good pursuit, and staying across the board, not giving it. We saw a lot of big holes in that defense early in the game that Cincinnati was exploiting. Right now, they're all holding their positions really, really well. I wonder if he wanted to throw back to Kenner on that one. I think he did. A lot of times you'll see that, that, uh, that reverse, and then the quarterback comes out for the swing pass. Now, when he stood and looked, there were three blue jerseys looking yeah. at him. 11-27 to play now. Timeout on the field. 
Utah State's going to call timeout. Their first of this half. 11.27 to go down the stretch. We'll be back. Boise. A quiet western city. for another credit card. Mm, we've never gotten one like this. What is it, made of gold? Better. This one's a First USA Platinum Visa card. Uh-huh, at a platinum price. I mean, how much are they talking about? Three, four hundred dollars a year just for the privilege? It's free. No annual fee. Hmm. Well, what kind of interest? Uh, fixed introductory rate is 4.9% APR. Oh, that's the lowest I remember seeing. Maybe we should switch. To apply for your first USA Platinum Visa card, call this number now. You don't have to be wealthy, just responsible. Having one is a credit to the way you manage your finances, so don't wait. Apply by phone today. Save now and save when the rate goes to a still low fixed 12.99% APR. Imagine us with a first USA Platinum Visa card. We deserve it. They're giving us credit for our good credit. Hmm. Well, how about some credit for my good idea? <laughs> National Car Rental Bowl Week continues as Clemson battles Auburn in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Clemson-Auburn, Friday at 3 on ESPN. Well, Chad Plummer has shown the nation Cincinnati might go looking good hands with number four. Boy, good hands, good feet, good everything. Here you see the option, almost too easy. His lineman could have got through that hole. He does it with his legs, then he does it with his hands here. But Deontay Kenner is a quarterback. Does a nice job getting open over the middle. And here is the freshman on a little swing pass to Orlando Smith, who does the rest. Again, the experiment. Deontay Kenner, Kenner is coming at quarterback. Chad Plummer has gone to wide receiver. That has happened almost at, at times every other play, and it's been very successful. They have not missed a beat. 35-19 with 11.27 to go. Plummer under center. Bearcats going to stay on the ground, choose some clock. Robert Cooper, the sophomore, tackled by Lindsey Hassel. Great story on Lindsey Hassel, number 51 of Utah State. Played at Dixie Junior College, transferred up to Utah State, walked on. Right. And then Coach uh, John L. Smith saw him in practice, I think, in the spring game. He ran in, had five sacks. And who was this guy? Yeah. That's how you get scholarships. Ends up, get, ends up getting six starts on the year. Nice job there. And as you're going to see Cincinnati, as we take a look at Hassel, Cincinnati will try and burn some of the clock now. 63 tackles on the season. Came in with seven sacks. Oh, yeah, that's that's worth a scholarship. Sure is. Tuck and run. Plummer, not much. Good read by Utah State to the 41. That's going to bring up a fourth down. And the tackle was made by Safonia. First time we've caught Rover back, another linebacker, really, a second-team pick, all Big West, he number did, 58. He did a nice job of staying home. That was a quarterback draw all the way. And Safonia stayed home and made a good job of making the tackle on Plummer, who's been very, very elusive today. Now for Utah State, it's a chance for Stevie Smith to break loose, ranked third in the country in punt returns. Smith at the 21, Smith at the 30, and is tackled at the 33-yard line. 40-yard kick, 12-yard return. John L. Smith, his final game today. Sad to go, yes, but the future's ahead. Well, I think we're going to be excited. I think once it's over, it's going to hit everybody. Uh, you know, I think the night before tonight is going to be as tough as... Uh, there is because we we get together and we do some things in the evening some tradition things and i think that's going to be the saddest part for me uh there's going to be some tears shed but again it's it's life uh we talk about that uh, and that's what football teaches me hey there sometimes there's up sometimes there's down just get up and get going talking to john l smith yesterday and he had some uh, misty eyes at times he has taken some criticism he has felt uh the pains of uh, leaving this and, uh, you know he said Steve Smith one of his favorite guys he's like working uh, much with his quarterback in uh, sock 
you know, coaches say, well, you'd move on. It's, it's a career move. Yeah. yeah, the money's better, yes. Yeah, but, you know, we started to see it more and more coaches leaving, and we talked about this. You know, what about the player that was recruited by that coach in that system? You know, maybe should they be allowed to go somewhere else and not lose a year of eligibility? We I mean, thought it was a pretty yeah. good idea. We may open up Pandora's <laughs> box a little bit, but the idea sounds pretty good. Sock with the toss. Demario Brown had it, lost it, and again is just elusive. Slip slide into the 40-yard line. And when John L. Smith makes his move to Louisville, they've already made really the move. He's taken six coaches with him. Yeah, here you go. You see all the coaches that are going with him. Uh, virtually the whole staff is being gutted. New systems to learn next year. And, and we talked, to, especially to Bob Petrino, the offensive coordinator, and he said, you know, it, it was tough at first. You know, there was some resentment from the players. And then, of course, there's some maybe, well, you know what, I don't have to listen to this coach anymore. He's not going to be there. I think, it's, I think it's a very, very tough transition. Bearcat showing blitz on third down five. Soft reads it up top. Incomplete over the shoulder. Nakia Jenkins, but the ball was thrown out of bounds, and that brings up a fourth down. Tinker Keck playing some good defense, forcing forcing the Nakia Jenkins to the sideline. Almost like a basketball move, kind of boxing out, forcing him to, to, to the sideline to where the ball is only catchable, out of bounds. This is, a, this is a tough area here in the 40-yard line, fourth and five. I know there's eight minutes to go, but you almost wonder if Utah State maybe should have tried this one to go for it. Would have been a big chance, but, you know, they're down 16. Big bounce. Keck takes it at the 21 and is swarmed under at the moment he touched the football. So that stops the clock. 8.28 to play in the Humanitarian Bowl, and Cincinnati heading down the stretch, leading 35-19. Attention homeowners in need of a home equity loan. It's time you called Superior Bank FSB to get the Superior difference. Superior Bank is a federal savings bank which for over 75 years has been helping homeowners save money by refinancing at lower rates, consolidate their high interest debt, or pay off overdue credit cards. Superior has helped thousands of homeowners who were rejected elsewhere or who have had credit problems in the past. Homeowners, call Superior Direct at 1-888-678-7777 and get the Superior difference. All over America, people are discovering a package of important free information concerning hearing loss. Call the toll-free number right now, and you'll receive a valuable video and informative booklet that show you how hearing aids may help you hear better. I learned a lot of important things about hearing, including ways to help myself. You know, it's sad going through life not hearing what your family's saying, particularly when you might learn how to help yourself with this free 15-minute video. Call the toll-free number for your free video information kit today. George Washington stopped the British at Valley Forge, but he never made stops like these. He never watched hockey, and now he's dead. Watch the NHL on ESPN2 before life passes you by. These X-game athletes and I, we share a special bond, one that allows us to understand each other, even if sometimes we can barely understand ourselves. The Winter X-Games, coming soon. Welcome back. Beautiful foothills that surround Boise, Idaho, Cincinnati, leading Utah State. I can almost see little Joe and Ben and <laughs> riding down the hill. Over on the ranch, yeah. huh? We, we got lost here the other day and started driving in an area that they might have they put us to work. You somewhere. were driving. I was giving directions. So that's a dangerous combo. Orlando knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Tony D'Amato once again making the tackle. That's 18 stops on the day. Got a player down. No, I think it's actually a, a coach or a cameraman or someone behind the bench there. He caught the full brunt of 245 pounds of Orlando Smith. And uh, that person is not getting up too quickly. Well, let's hope uh, he's okay. Well, ESPN continues its bowl week coverage Wednesday, 3.30, when Lee Roberts leads 22nd-ranked Southern Miss into the Liberty Bowl to take on Pittsburgh, who counters with 30-touchdown passer Pete Gonzalez. Bowl week rolls on only on ESPN. Pittsburgh showing a nice improvement this year, and, and I guess we have to call them Pittsburgh now. They're no longer Pitt. Not Pitt. Not Pittsburgh. Pitt, Pittsburgh. With the nice little italic type of writing across <laughs> their, their jersey. I think we have a civilian down uh, behind the bench there. 
Orlando Smith got bumped right at the out of out of bounds mark and he still had a head of steam going. Let's see if we can get some information from Holly Rowe. It's the gentleman that holds the down box that that lets know what do, what box it is. His right knee is injured. They're examining it right now, but he is in a lot of pain. It doesn't look like he will be coming back to hold that down marker. All right, thank you, Holly. I'd say the sideline is a very dangerous place to be. You know, you have to be heads up. Yeah, you got off to always 60 minutes a day. Yep. Chad Plummer, the quarterback. Orlando Smith breaking through a tackle and got the shoelaces down at the 45-yard line. Good tackle by John Del Cardi. Another name we've called a lot today, and again, you know, when you're running, that's not a good thing for your free safety, but John Del Cardi is showing he is a very, very sure tackler, 110 tackles this year. He does a nice job of keeping his uh, body in front of the, the runners and the receivers and hanging on. One of the team captains for John L. Smith and the Utah State Aggies, only a junior out of Miami. Also has six interceptions, which is 10th in the nation. Eight minutes to go. Fourth quarter, 35-19 Cincinnati, and they're just taking their time. Running the, the play clock down to five, now four. They're going to bruise the Aggies if they can with the run game. Landon Smith, the fullback. Deco and Vaughn Harrison team up to make the tackle. Well, it's road grader left, road grader right. The plays are very easy to call now. In the huddle, you see uh, Utah State, the Aggies are stepping up, trying to get right in the gaps, trying to make some penetration, but that line of Cincinnati is just doing a great job. You see the linebacker stepping up for Utah State, trying to get that quick penetration. From the eye, second down six. A couple. To the Aggie 48 and again Tony D'Amato who's going to end up that's his 19th tackle and that's just tied his career high he had 19 tackles against Oregon State and that's the most he has had and he will surely go past that in a bowl game though that doesn't count for season stats but uh, then again, and again this is the first humanitarian bowl so he will definitely have the tackle record for this bowl there's no doubt about that he has been he has been one of the few bright spots for Utah State today. I'll tell you, that record will stand for a while. Let me tell you that. 19 tackles, total yards, Cincinnati nearing the 400 mark. Utah State at 286. Again, the run and a nice tackle to trip up number 33, Robert Cooper and Sophonia. But they get enough for the first down. They move the chains. They keep the clock running. After the chains are set, it'll get started again. The 619. There it goes. Uh, Utah State just has two more timeouts to use. Need to use them judiciously. Notre Dame word. Very good. Oh. Somebody wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> Plumber again working the play clock down to four now three this is nothing fancy folks Landon Smith the fullback picks up a couple and the clock will continue to run good look at Rick Minter fourth season at Cincinnati told us yesterday nope not done still and still I'm on track but not exactly where we want to be and this is his third straight winning season that hasn't been done since 1974 through 76 and it is a contract here for him it, it is up this year and I'm sure uh, he will be treated very well yes. and come back and I'm sure uh, to keep this staff together. Uh, this uh, Bearcat team looks to make a nice run over the next few years. We have a good head man in Rick Minner. And Cincinnati ended the longest bowlless drought in Division I football 47 years as they make their appearance today. Orlando Smith, maybe a yard to the 37. Let's check back in with Holly Rowe. Guys, we've got to say something about left tackle Jason Fabini for Cincinnati. He's had a big day today, but an even bigger week. On Christmas Eve, his wife Joanne gave birth to a baby boy, Jason Hunter. Six pounds, one ounce. Now, ironically, the baby was three weeks early, but Jason, the dad, says it worked out great because he was coming out here to the bowl game. He goes straight from here to the East-West Shrine Bowl and then the Senior Bowl, so he feels very grateful that he was able to witness the birth of his child and fit in all this hectic football mm. stuff at the same time. A six-pounder, huh? I'll tell you, Fabini, dad, 6'7", 322. 
We'll see what uh, Sun will turn out to be, huh? <laughs> Plummer on the option, finds a seam. Steph Arms turns the corner, could go. Bumped out of bounds at the 20 by Bashar Livingston. And Livingston comes up hobbling. Plummer continues his big day for Beanie. Can you imagine the size of him holding that child, mm. the size of that kid in his hand? You get a good look at Chad Plummer coming back again next year. Again, he'll be a quarterback. He'll be wide receiver. He's 230 now, and I talked to him yesterday. He can gain some weight, 240, 250. And in the AFC West, in the NFL, you have, you know, the uh, the Dudley, the Shannon Sharp, mm -hmm. uh, Popson. These guys are all like 240, 250, more possession-type re receiving tight ends. He could do that or keep his weight where it is, maybe drop a little bit and play wide receiver. He knows uh, if his future is in the NFL, it'll be at one of those two positions. Another first down for Cincinnati. Plummer hands it off. Cooper. And the big blue swarm led by Hassel knocks him down. No gain on the play. Now you look at uh, a plumber. He's got he, very much like a sharp. Yep. Looks a little bit like John Stallworth back in the old Pittsburgh Steeler days. He is a good looking athlete. Runs well. He's got those long strides. And again, you know, a 230 pounder as a wide receiver, you know, he'll go over the middle as you see all his numbers today. 61 passing with a TD, 49 rushing and 64 receiving. That is a nice afternoon of work. 3.45 to go. Plummer finds the scene. And he is still working hard. The whistle had blown. The ball dead. The ball popped loose. Jeremy Hunt Loveless made the big hit on Plummer. Brings it down to the 16-yard line. So the Aggies call another timeout, one remaining, and we'll take a break. 3.26 to go here in the Humanitarian Bowl. The Bearcats lead 35-19. Can your radio do this? Only one radio can give you stereo sound this big, yet is small enough to fit almost anywhere. The extraordinary new wave radio from Bose. Press the remote control and hear sound from a radio like you've never heard before. Big, rich sound that fills the room. You hear music the way it was meant to be heard. Clear, full, incredibly lifelike. You've got to hear the wave radio to believe it. And now you can in your own home. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call us toll free to learn how and we'll deliver the wave radio to your door. Experience big stereo sound from a radio. Call today for more information. It will make a difference in the way you listen to music. A big difference. Accept it. The college basketball game you want to see isn't on where you live and there's nothing you can do about it. Or is there? Imagine a place where the games you want to see are on night after night. A place where you can choose from hundreds of college matchups. Just order ESPN Full Court, ESPN's pay-per-view college basketball package, and we'll bring you the big games and top conference rivalries, and all in your own backyard. ESPN Full Court. There's no place like home. To order, call your cable company or direct TV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS. Good look at Rick Minter and his fourth season. He has taken huge steps with this program, but he doesn't want this to be the last. There's plenty more to come. We just have to use this as a as a platform and as a as a sounding board to, to say, hey, take a look at us here, whether you be a recruit, whether you be our fans, and say this is what we're capable of doing. It's not the end, it's not it's just part of the journey along the way. Uh, everything has to start somewhere. We ended a forty seven year drought, but we don't want to start a new drought next year. Yep, the forty seven year drought is over. The next step is to make bowl appearances year after year and the conference USA is gonna I tell you in a short period of time they have really begun to to uh, get some attention around the country another team in that conference USA Southern Miss playing in the Liberty Bowl this current drive here for Cincinnati that was their 11th play all running plays and they are showcasing themselves very well for some of the kids around the country who you know looking at colleges hey Cincinnati up and comer up and coming team you know opportunities to play you know like the style of what they do running and passing so it, this is a this is a one of the best recruiting 
uh, techniques you can have is success in a bowl game. Play clock down to two. And hitting the hole and hitting it hard. Robert Cooper, the sophomore. Di Tony Diamato, how about 20? 20 tackles on the day. And I'll tell you, Mentor's got to feel good. 47-year drought, 1950, the Sun Bowl. Last time the Bearcats made a bowl appearance. An interesting story about that is they said the first official bowl game was the Rose Bowl in 1902, but the former uh, Cincinnati Athletic Director, Bill Schwarberg, said he has a manuscript that says in 1897, Southern Athletic Club in New Orleans invited Cincinnati to come down to a postseason game on New Year's Day to New Orleans. So 14 members of Cincinnati and the coaching staff went to New Orleans and defeated Southern Athletic Club 16 to nothing in a postseason game. And at the victory party that night, Louisiana State was there and they challenged Cincinnati to a game. They played again the next day and beat Louisiana State 28 to nothing. So they think they were actually at a postseason bowl before even the Rose Bowl was officially credited with the first bowl game. So they say, I've got a football, you come over and play me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hook up Steve Smith from soft. Big gainer to the 37. And the Aggies refused to quit. Brayboy made the tackle 227 as they stopped the clock to reset the chains. You know, again, this is the type of offense we expected to see from the gun. But as, as Holly Rowe pointed out on the sideline, you know, in the beginning of the game and then later on, there was no emotion at first. Now, later in the game, they started to get fired up. And again, with just 2.23 to go, it may be too little too late. 25-yard pickup. He's swinging out to Demario Brown. Dropped it. A little behind him. Of course, uh, tendency would be, Mike is... I want to catch the ball. You got to catch it before he can run, but that ball was a little behind his left hip. Yeah, it was, and he was going nowhere if he caught it anyway. There were three Bearcats right there. They have to go downfield earlier in the game when Sock was throwing a lot of incomplete balls. I had said, hey, throw some short ones, get some confidence. He's hit some down the field. You're down, you know, 16 points with 218 to go. You've got to make the throws downfield. Swing passes aren't going to do it now. Second down, 10. Three wide receivers set to the far side. Demario Brown now going to reverse it. Here Got comes Steve Smith. Oh, what a block thrown by Sock. And out of bound goes Steve Smith. But we we'll give a game ball to Sock. You see that? Well, I tell you what, quarterback threw his head in there. I mean, that, that, that broke it. It didn't get as much yards as you'd like to see a reverse gain. But it gained more because of Matt Sock block. <laughs> and I tell you what, if... Luckily, Cincinnati doesn't have to really watch films on this because if you get knocked down by the quarterback, you really get mocked in a film session. Brings up a third down and five. Again, they set up trips to the far side. The lone back, Brown. Bearcats coming with the blitz. Sock throws in. Oh, picked off. It's Tinker down to the 45. Brad Jackson, pardon me, Brad Jackson. That was a nice interception. He looked like he almost took it away. The ball was a little behind and thrown very hard. Jackson did a nice job hanging onto the ball. It's gonna come in from the left of your screen. They run a blitz, so Jackson's in man coverage. The ball is behind him. The Kia Jenkins hadn't even turned around. It went over his right shoulder behind him. Brad Jackson does a very athletic move for the catch. Look at the ball behind him. Jackson hangs on. And then the ability to break that tackle and run and gain a few yards. Big, big play. Boy, third team All-America selection by Sporting News and Football America. Brad Jackson, a senior out of Akron, Ohio. First interception of the season. Plummer at quarterback. Looks like a broken play. He's going to swing it out. Chase from behind. And Plummer steps out at the 45-yard line. That stops the clock with 153 to play. You know, go back to Brad Jackson. He's 6'2", 228. He's a senior. Here's a guy at the next level. Might be a tweener. Not really big enough for linebacker and maybe too big for DB. But it's starting to kind of go that way in the NFL. The Dexter Coakley's, you mm -hmm. know, shorter and lighter that have made it in the NFL. So, you know, Jackson may get a shot that way. But he, he may be too small for a linebacker and too big for a, uh, a defensive back, he might be caught right between. You see Gatorade somewhere beneath that pile of... I have a feeling uh -huh. Rick Minter may get a shower. From the eye. 
Handoff goes off to Cooper. Not much. Lost a yard back to the 46. Caleb Smith brought him down. Well, it's a nice job. Cincinnati now has all backup offensive linemen, and everybody's getting a shot to play in this game, what you like to see in bowl games. You know, a couple stories of the game has been time of possession. Cincinnati's really held the ball a long time. Four turnovers for Utah State, just one for Cincinnati, and those turnovers have turned into 14 points for the Bearcats. And right now it's a 16-point game, so turnovers again, a big difference in a ball game. Utah State, you know, give them credit. They've done a nice job fighting back since halftime and Demario Brown standing up in the locker room and saying guys it's on us you know John L Smith the coach who's leaving said hey the players you have to take over there is a timeout with 143 to go we'll take a break come back for the final minute 43 don't go away we wanted to leave a better world for our kids we're sure leaving a different one but they understand it better than I ever could like electronics to my son it's second nature that's why he picked ITT tech he can earn an associate's degree in electronics engineering technology in two years. It's their world now. And it's in good hands. Take control with a degree from ITT Tech. Call 1-800-942-0099. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift too, so call now. A minute 43 to play in the inaugural Humanitarian Bowl here in Boise, Idaho. Plummer has has directed this Bearcat offense. I'd say superbly. And, uh, they're ready to celebrate. And they, they deserve to celebrate. Their game plan, check out the young guy and Deontay Kenner, the freshman quarterback. He's done a great job. Plummer done a great job of receiver and quarterback. Fumble, but the whistle had been blown, had blown the ball dead. Jeremy Hunt Loveless wanted to take that ball uh, 55 yards for the touchdown. That would have made it very interesting. Now it's fourth down. Clock running, 119. Here comes a Gatorade. Watch out, boys. That's <laughs> the big old beef moving that Gatorade, too. Got him. And there it is. Oh, they got him there. Got him. Blindsided and never knew it was coming. He's got to wonder with all the cords he has. He's got to ground it. Boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, they got him good. Good setup. See, the other offensive linemen were out in front of him, kind of talking to him, setting him up. That's hard because you've got to keep your eye contact. If you look up over your shoulder, you might give it away. You can see uh, Coach Menner says, boys, this game's not over. Still got a little serious look. Now the hugs are coming. Big win for this program. Again, three winning seasons in a row. First time in 23 years that's happened. First bowl game in 47 years. This program really, really on the upswing. Bearcats are looking at fourth and 16. Steve Smith will get one more shot at it. Doug Johnson back to punt. He's got a very deliberate approach to the ball. Smith with a fair catch at the 21-yard line. For that last play, time of possession, Cincinnati 41 minutes and 20 seconds. Utah State 16 minutes. That's amazing. Holly Rowe, what's up? Guys, a big interception last series by Brad Jackson. I have to tell you a cute story about him. He's been getting technicals while he's been playing basketball for the University of Cincinnati. You see, he's a big trash talker. And it's okay to do on the football field with your helmet on, but he's been getting caught when he's on the basketball court. In a game last week, they put him in on a defender. They said, don't let him get a shot off. So he went up to his guy and said, hey, you and me, it's bumping coverage all night, buddy. <laughs> Sock with the play action. Prevent defense by Cincinnati over the middle. Oh, what a catch. What a catch 
by the tight end. That was um, DeMooney. One got DeMooney out of Dixie Junior College, a junior. Monterey, California home, and he shot. He caught that right around the ankles. Well, that was nice. You don't normally see tight ends that far downfield, especially ones that weigh 266 pounds, but the referees are conferring. Oh, you know, the same thing uh, The same thing happened again. They're saying DeMooney was an ineligible receiver. The, the setup they have, he is on the line, and he's an ineligible receiver, but... The catch is definitely worth another look. Look at him go down low to his ankles and make this one. Outstretched, all hands. That's the way to catch a ball with your hands. You mentioned his weight at 266, able to get down the field and make a nice grab, but all for naught. See the happy Cincinnati players on the sideline. They have a long flight back. The flight is all that much more joyous after the win. 37 ticks remain. Now the officials step in. That's twice Utah State got called for that. Something in their alignment. That time it was a tight end on the two-point conversion. It was a wide receiver. London McBride lined up like a tight end illegally both times. They want to put more time back on the game clock. There's 36 seconds remain. It's been a tough afternoon for that man. He's come on late in the game. Cincinnati playing off a little bit on some of the completions. Halftime, he was four out of 15. And Utah State had dug themselves in such a big hole at 21 to nothing. Very, very tough to come back from that. They've made a valiant effort. They've come out with a lot more fire and passion in the second half to pull it to within 16. But as you see, with 36 seconds left, it's not going to happen today. Now the clock runs, eight on the play clock, 32 on the game clock. Okay, they wind it down, they stop it again, 27 seconds. Jim Coyne, 25 years of officiating, retiring, his last one. Whenever it's your last one, you always want to get out of the help. Stay away from the guys. Don't get caught up in the pile in the middle. Sox going deep. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Nakia Jenkins. Don McKnight, back up corner, in on the coverage. That stops the clock with 14 ticks, and a flag is down. Yeah, we got a little frustration going out on the part of the Aggies, mixing it up, and Cincinnati coming back either be offsetting or they'll get the person who's through the second punch. No doubt it's got to be frustrating for Utah State. One of the linemen on the blocking grabbed the face mask and it was even after the play when it happened. It's, and that, that's out of frustration. It's been a tough long day for the Aggies of Utah State. A very happy day for this team. 14 seconds remain. They're going to back the ball up now inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. John L. Smith, his final seconds as an Aggie head coach. He took the Louisville job back on November 24th, just before Thanksgiving. He's been back and forth recruiting for the Cardinals and then obviously back at Utah State trying to prepare for this football game. Later this afternoon, he'll officially hand the reins over to Dave Arcelani, the former college roommate who's been coaching at Weaver State for the past nine years. Long ball, incomplete, too deep. Stops the clock, six ticks remain. And don't forget, Bowl Week coverage continues tonight, 8 o'clock, WAC champion Colorado State and the Rams taking on the high-flying offense of the Tigers of Missouri. A big surprise this year for Mizzou. Tune in to ESPN tonight for all the Bowl Week excitement. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Matt uh, Sock showed a little bit of arm there. He was in the end zone when he threw that. He threw it about 67 yards in the air. Showed some 
shown some arm strength. Now they label him as a big time arm. Only stands six one. Sometimes has the trouble throwing the ball over the middle, but do not question his arm strength. And again, he's going to step and gun it. This one's going to cover about 70. Down inside the 30 final play of the game in Cincinnati. Humanitarian Bowl champions. Great game plan by Cincinnati. A great test with Deontay Kenner, the freshman quarterback, coming in and throwing the ball. And Chad Plummer, the normal option quarterback, going to wide receiver. A definite success if you look at the Plummer and the day he had. And that will, I don't think without a doubt, be part of their package next year. Mike, talk about what the bowl game will do for both programs. Obviously, obviously it's big uh, recruiting. Cincinnati will get the, the plum. Utah State seen nationally. Some kids will know that as well. Let's go downstairs, Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Minner, you didn't want to just show up and win this game. You're using this as a platform to keep building the program. How do you feel after this win? Well, I'll tell you what, my hat's off to number one, the, the players at the University of Cincinnati. Chad Palmer and company and everybody that worked hard to get this done. Also, my hat's off to the city of Boise, Idaho. This is a great forum for a bowl game. We're going to wish them the very best in many years to come. This is just another step for us in the right direction of our program now. Okay, you can't say enough about this guy, Chad Plummer, the game MVP. And Chad, I know you got to be tired right now. Yeah, I'm sure tired. I mean, I was going to do the whole game. My guys kept me in there, kept my head up the whole time when I did do something wrong. I don't know the stats, but somewhere you've got to be making bowl in college football history by throwing for a touchdown, receiving a touchdown, and also getting a few on the ground. Yeah, I mean, this is like this is the um, first bowl, humanitarian bowl, the first time ever. I mean, somebody's gonna go out and record books. All right, talk a little bit about how you know these plays. We were talking about up in the booth, and the guys. How do you keep all this straight? Not only the plays on offense, but your route. I mean, just from being quarterback, you're gonna know who's running what route. I mean, in practice, I, I get a lot of repetitions at it, so eventually I know. Them. All right, well, the experiment worked out. Game MVP, Chad Plummer. Back up to you, Craig. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Chad Plummer with a magnificent day. The Bearcats of Cincinnati win the Humanitarian Bowl 35-19. For Mike Golick and Holly Rowe, I'm Craig Bowlerjack. ESPN News is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.